Okay, uh, good evening everyone. I hope this video finds you well. So today, uh, let's have general science. No, so this is a free uh, lecture review. For uh, that topic, our subject is the general science. So by the way, I am Reglan May Elanan. Uh, top eight by God's grace last March 2023 and I am a science major so as you can see my rating for majorship is 95% so um, I'm sure na I I got 90 plus sa majorship but I did not expect that it would be 95 <laughs> no so um, uh, maybe it's uh, itong rating ko 95 this is the rating na probably naka patap talaga sa akin because um 95 is quite high for the majorship so as uh, even me i'm quite surprised <laughs> sa majorship na rating so that's it um i currently i am a college instructor sa crmc siburus boat memorial colleges my arm my alma mater and yeah so let's start uh before we'll claim it first no? so you will pass the boards let's claim it uh let's manifest no? the power of manifestation we always associate it with uh, the law of attraction so the more uh, positive you um you give that then you know, absorb that then so most likely magiging positive then yung outcomes but uh let's not uh substitute manifestation sa ating, sa ating hard work, sa ating perseverance, sa preparation natin, consistent na effort. But it's good na, kiniklaim na talaga natin that we will be a licensed professional teacher. So, um, this one, I posted this one last January 30, 2022. So, ang tagal na, no? Um, one year. <laughs> so, I manifested this already. So, I post na ako sa Facebook. Diba? Ang dami sa Facebook, LPTQT, Top Nature QT, yan o. <laughs> Mga manifestation, law of attraction. Okay, so here I posted in Jesus' name. Yeah, of course, we have to believe in the power of the uh, divine creator. No, we, we, have, we should believe in the intervention of the Holy Spirit that will guide us. So in Jesus' name, I will tap the let. I will, it will be done. So I posted this, but at first, naka only me lang to. <laughs> so, and then when the result came out, so in <laughs> public, ko, and then daming the comments. So uh, yeah, another post here last December 19. So most probably, I'm sure, marami na rin sa inyo na you share sa Facebook or <laughs> like manifest no that's good already that's that's so nice na uh, may manifest na tayo no okay um that's our common goal man we have to pass and yeah tap the let so manifest already claim it already that we will pass the board so walapit na uh, September 2020 yeah 2023 this year so that's 70 days left na lang diba <laughs> so mga uh, magte-take ngayong September 70 days na lang so that's 2 months and 10 days <laughs> so i guess i hope marami na kayong nabasa na mga questions every day you practice every day answer every day practice na? the drills yan uh, before we we'll start I'll I'll um read this quote from Sally Ride. Sally Ride is the first ever American woman na nakapunta sa outer space. No? So, sa US. Sa American si Sally Ride. So, siya kauna-unahang babae na nakapunta sa outer space. And it's such um, in, important um, uh, tawag natin dito, important na event no, sa history sa space exploration kasi nga hindi nagigi na nabibigyan ang mga babae dati di ba na notice natin mga famous scientists <laughs> sila Einstein uh, puro mga lalaki <laughs> rare lang yung mga girls so then the start din kang Marie Curie di ba Marie Curie for those uh, kilala so lalo na sa mga science majors mga mahalagang tao sa science no Marie Curie has uh, two Nobel prizes um, both in chemistry and in physics, grabe, tapos babae siya. Tapos uh, sa time na yun, mga girls, uh, mga babae is hindi 
nabibigyan ng chance, hindi nabibigyan ng opportunities. No? So, it's an important na event uh, na may babae. So, Sally Ride said, uh, science is fun. Uh, science is curiosity and we all have natural curiosity. Science is a process of investigating, it's posing questions and coming up with a method, it's delving in. So, yeah, really, science is fun. Science actually would explain uh, the things nga, yung mga gusto nating malaman sa universe. <laughs> so, that's why, um, since, I would have to say, since uh, bata pa talaga ako, since elementary, high school, I'm really into science already. So, parang, um, gusto gusto ko na talaga ang science because um, I find it fascinating na I would be able to understand yung mga questions na, yung mga, parang mga questions mo lang about the universe, about our planet, so, pa-answer siya ng science. It's like magic, but it's real. No, <laughs> so yan ang science. And a lot of people would uh, would say na mahirap ang science. Parang yan yung common notion. No? Na ay, science major ka, mahirap ba? Mahirap ang science. Palagi na yan, palagi sa nasabi. And parang naging notion na siya na talagang mahirap ang science. But um, I guess if you really love something, so parang uh, maging madali siya para sa atin. If gusto natin, no? if na-notice niyo yung mga bagay na gustong-gusto natin is uh, nagiging madali. Alright, so um, first, uh, I will give tips. Um, first step, uh, tip of course is we have to pray. We have really have to pray. And prayer is uh, actually a communication. It's a two-way process. So dapat, uh, when you pray, you will talk to God. And at the same time, you will listen also because God will also talk to you. So, communication siya. Hindi, po, hindi pwede puro lang a pray, praise God. Sana ganito, sana ganyan. Uh, hindi pwede dapat. We have to listen to God. And I find this proverb very beautiful. Uh, this verse very beautiful. Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. No, napakagandang, pro- napakagandang verse nito. Um, we have to trust in the Lord. Kasi parang there will be times na parang pakiramdam natin, alam natin lahat na meron na tayong plano, gato, ganyan. But if hindi siya natupad, then sort of we will be disappointed. But we have to trust in the process of God. We have to trust His plans. No? Uh, kasi I graduated last year, uh, June. Yeah, June last year. And I was uh, not a Latin honor. Hindi ako isa sa mga Latin na uh, may Latin honors na recognition. So, hindi ako laude laude ganun. But, uh, supposedly, my my average qualifies for magna no, or mania cum laude. But, may we have a uh, rule sa school. No? Hindi may, may dapat may cut off na mga grades ganun. So, that time, I really asked God, I really questioned. Marang, God, bakit? Why? <laughs> bakit? <laughs> hindi ako, hindi mo to binigay na recognition na na nagsumikap naman ako. Feel, feel ko naman, deserve ko naman sana. Na hindi naman ako naging pariwara. Uh, naging mabuti naman akong estudyante. Naging mabuti naman akong anak. Ganun. So, parang, I questioned why. And ito pala. And then, this is his answer. No, um, He was preparing me for something bigger pala. And that is, uh, maging isa sa top notchers by God's grace. Um, next is plan. Yeah, you have to plan. Diba? Sabi ka nila, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And planning, or ito, this picture shows my schedule. <laughs> like countdown ako no January, since January until March 19, the day of the board exam. So, like countdown ako. And uh, it is part of my planning. So, you have to plan, you have to study hard, and at the same time, study smart. So, by knowing your your learning styles, so you that's uh, one way para maging smart yung pag review mo. Kasi, um, iba-iba tayo eh. As for me, I I learned better when I listen to classical music. No, and hindi yung music na alam mo yung lyrics eh. <laughs> mag, mag, hindi ka na makaka-focus nun. So, mas better yung mga classical na piano na mga songs, ang mga music. Plan. No? You have to plan. And then, take note also sa time. Parang, parang ito na ay 
nag countdown ako so uh, like pag January dapat ang goal ko mas sabihan ko na to lahat so ganyan so you have to set a goal no you plan uh, so nito na yun yung set your goals so the journey of preparation is as crucial as the outcome uh, isa lang naman ang goal natin na ba uh, we have to pass and yeah bonus na yung mag top so we have to play uh, we have to aim higher you know kay um uh, free naman yung uh, ikaw nila dreams are free di ba so kung gusto mong mag uh, pumasa or mag top so yeah, we can use this one the goal setting na smart <laughs> remember the smart specific is measurable attainable realistic time bound okay so it is essential to take care of your well-being along the way so this is talking about holistic na health natin. So hindi lang puro mental. You, you have to be physically prepared as well, emotionally prepared. Diba? Kahit, kahit anong aral mo dyan, kahit na-memorize mo na yung isang libro, pagdating sa board exam, may lagnat ka or, or oh, sinisipon ka. So hindi ka physically healthy. Diba? Or um, uh, may problema ka sa yung emotions or uh, may broken hearted ka <laughs> before the word exam so paano na yan kahit anong alang aral pa yan kahit mentally prepared ka kahit yung uh, nabasa mo na lahat ng reviewers so hindi pa rin yun enough you have to be holistically prepared so and then um read reliable materials the thing is uh, when we take board exam, ang, ang dami na talaga nating makita reviewers online, uh, lalo na sa YouTube, no, sa Facebook, ang daming materials. So, it's up to us to check if um, reliable ba yung source, no? Dapat reliable yung materials na binabasa natin. Huwag tayong basta-basta maniwala lang kung ano yung mga video sa YouTube. Diba? Ang dami mga letter viewers sa YouTube. So, check as well if tama ba yung mga answers, no? Uh, you have to research, no? Research in meron naman yung internet. So, that's, uh, yun, yan yung napaka-ganda uh, ng internet because marami, tayong, marami na tayong sources online. But it's, we have to be vigilant if uh, tama ba yung mga, uh, mga materials na yan. So, and the last thing is be consistent. So, sa lahat ng mga top notchers, sa mga lahat ng mga passers na nakilala ko, Parang bottom line sa mga tips nila is you have to be consistent. No? Consistent talaga. Consistency is the key, di ba? So, we have to be consistent sa preparation natin, sa effort. So, this one would require a lot of sacrifices talaga. <laughs> di ba? Marami tayong mga gustong gawin. Back then, I really wanted to play Mobile Legends all the time. But I have to sacrifice. I have to study. Kasi... Uh, isipin mo, this would be your last board exam na. Isipin mo yung mga taong magiging masaya. No, if you will be happy to see your name sa pastors or you'll be happy to see your name sa top notchers. So, uh, mas magiging happy yung parents natin, yung guardians natin. So, think of those people. So, be consistent with your girl. And, oh, one last thing pala. Circle your friends with great people. No, so... I really believe uh, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are kasi back in college there was there was a time na parang ay okay okay na eh, 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 hindi na ako nag-effort sa school but my friends were so great no my yung mga kaibigan ko sa college um academically inclined din sila so parang um maano ka talaga uh, let's start without further ado I uh, will give keywords at first no mga keywords to na palaging lumalabas sa let Parang suki na suki na talaga to ng let. Okay, so hair like, oh paulit-ulit na to pag may hair like. Okay, that's cilia, yung sa move you use for the movement no ng ating mga cells. Hair like, that's cilia. Finger like, that is villi, no finger like structure, villi. Flop like, flop, that's epiglottis. Okay? And lastly, we have whip like. Whip like is flagella. So remember this four paulit ulit na to sa board exam sa Gen Ed. Okay, again hair like cilia, um, finger like that's your villi, and your flap like your epiglottis. And pag makita yung whip like, that is referring to flagella. Okay, so remember these four. All right, 
Next also is paulit-ulit na din to sa board exam. I hope na sana uh, some uh, sometimes i recycle kasi ng PRC yung mga questions. So if alam mo na, so that's a bonus point already no sa John Ed. Uh, okay, the discoverer of penicillin. Uh, this is uh, Alexander Fleming. So parang lumabas na rin to dati sa mga previous board exam. So kailangan din natin alamin yung mga previous board exam. Kasi nga, again, recycle ang ibang question. So, it's a bonus na nga points. So, the discoverer of penicillin, si Alexander Fleming. So, na-discover niya, uh, tatawag natin yung serendipity or happy accident. No? Serendipity. So, na-discover niya Alexander Fleming through serendipity. Um, ang penicillin, uh, penicillium notatum, is a fungi. And um, ang discovery niya is, it leads the way for uh, the creation of antibiotics in which maraming nasa-save na tao no, from that sa infection. So, yan. Um, kaya it's a it's a serendipity siya. It's a happy accident. Kasi, uh, hindi naman talaga niya intention yun na diskubrihan nila lang niya na kaya nga, serendipity. So, remember also serendipity kasi um, lumabas din yan dati. No? Na happy accident. Na-discover niya Alexander Fleming through serendipity. All right. Uh, another thing, released by plants at night, that is carbon dioxide. Ano yung nire-release ng plants at night? Carbon dioxide. Kaya nga, for those may mga tanim sa bahay, di ba, it's good na magpo tayo ng mga halaman sa ating, uh, sa uh, inside our house. But uh, at night, mas maigi na, ipalabas natin sila because nag-release sila ng carbon dioxide no, at night. And uh, they need... Ang mga halaman, they need oxygen as well. No, of course, kay meron din naman silang respiration. So, nangailangan din sila ng oxygen. So, they release carbon dioxide at night. So, ang question dito is, ano yung nire-release ng mga halaman at night? Okay? So, that's carbon dioxide. Alright. The most abundant gas in Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen. So, tandaan natin yan. And alam niyo yung sa mga junk foods, <laughs> yung nitrogen, yan, nitrogen gas yan. So, it makes the food na crisp pa rin siya kahit ilang araw na yung uh, mga junk foods. Pag open natin is um, makakain pa rin natin, no? crisp pa rin yung pagkain. Kasi it's because of nitrogen gas. So, kasali yan sa binabayaran natin <laughs> ang nitrogen gas no so na notice natin sa mga junk foods ngayon uh, parang hangin na lang yung <laughs> nasa uh, inside ng junk food but uh, that's in nitrogen gas okay and that's the most abundant gas in the earth's atmosphere ang nitrogen all right okay so let's proceed so a sea partly enclosed by land we call that a gulf okay gulf and the surface between Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle, we call that zone. So, ito, mga previous board exam na to na lumabas, previous board exam questions. Okay, combined chitins and glycans in their cell wall is a feature of what? A feature of fungi. Okay, remember this one, chitins and glycans. So, that's feature siya sa cell wall ng fungi. So, ang cell wall ng bacteria, we call that peptidoglycan. Okay, sa bacteria. And for plants... So, ano yung cell wall ng plants? So, we have uh, cellulose. No? So, cellulose is the most abundant na organic compound on earth. Okay? So, this one again, fungi, chitins, and glycans. Ang cell wall. And this one also, facilitate anticoagulation, leeches. So, paulit-ulit lang to. Nire-reverse lang nila sometimes. So, ano yung nag-facilitate ng anticoagulation? So, leeches. Or ano yung uh, ginagawa ng leeches? So, it facilitates anticoagulation. Okay? So, yung mga linta. And we have hurricane typhoon. So, meron pa tong cyclone. Yan, isang cyclone. So, di ba, sa atin, sa Philippines, uh, typhoon. Tantawag natin yung typhoon, no? Typhoon, oh, yung bagyong, uh, yung typhoon Yolanda, typhoon Undoy, ganon. So, we call it typhoon. Hindi naman natin natawag na hurricane. Kasi, kasi nga, we are uh, sa Pacific. So, galing sa Pacific yung storm. So, Pacific area storm, we call that typhoon. Sa Atlantic naman, sa Atlantic Ocean, tinatawag natin yung hurricane. And sa Indian Ocean, uh, tinatawag natin cyclone. Okay? So, yan yung difference niyan. Uh, based kung saan siya nang galing. Kung saan siya nag-originate yung storm. Alright. Now, we have metalloids. It displays properties of both metals and non-metals. Okay? Yan yung metalloid. So, question dito. Uh, it displays properties of both metals and non-metals. We call that metalloids. 
So, titingnan natin sa ating predict table. Uh, may um, may nakalagay dyan, no? Na mga metalloids, may symbol, may legend. Alright. So, sa flame test, uh, nakikita na ba kayo ng flame na uh, bright green, no? color green siya? So, it's because of the presence of what? Okay. Presence of boron. Uh, it indicates the presence of boron. Yung bright green, yung flame niya. So, ito, paulit-ulit din to. So, bright green, um, nire-reverse lang nila sometimes yung question. So, ano yung, um, if the flame is bright green, so, it, um, it indicates what? So, it indicates that there is boron present. So, uh, remember this one. And what causes malaria? Uh, this one. What causes malaria? That's plasmodium vivax. Plasmodium vivax causes malaria. So, ang carrier, ano ang carrier uh, ng malaria, di ba? So, the vector is the mosquito. And mosquito is, um, nabibal lang siya sa arthropoda, no? ang mosquito. So, what causes malaria? That's plasmodium vivax. Okay? And this one included in the kingdom plantae. That's Magnolia Day. So, just remember lang, mga keywords lang naman ito, no? mga previews na lumabas. So, hoping sana <laughs> i-recycle ng PRC. And alam mo na, so that's a bonus na point. And, okay, what allows microorganism to multiply in the medium? So, that's microbial culture. So, kinoculture natin yung mga microbes no? uh, uh, in the medium. In a petri dish, no? so uh, this one, what uh, leaves with green uh, color look green. So, bakit green yung color ng mga leaves nating mga plants? It's because they reflect green light. Ha? Hindi, hindi nag-absorb ng green light. Green light lang yung hindi ina-absorb ina ng mga halaman at ng mga leaves nating halaman. So, kung ano yung kulay na nakikita natin, yan yung color na hindi nila ina-absorb. So, yan yung kul kulay na nire-reflect nila. Okay, so leaves with green color look green in the sunlight because they reflect, uh, reflect, sorry, reflect green light. All right. Okay, what is an example of a unicellular organism? Oh, yan yung mga bacteria. So, bacteria, mga prokaryotes, no? Mga prokaryotes. When you say prokaryotes, oh, that is pertaining to bacteria, no? Mga unicellular na organism. Okay, um, earthworm is a hermaphrodite. So, meaning nito, dalawa yung organs ng earthworm. So, they can just reproduce. Kahit siya lang mag-isa, kaya niyang mag-reproduce. Meron siyang male at female na reproductive organ. Yan yung mga hermaphrodite. No? So, an example of hermaphrodite is an earthworm. Um, capable of regeneration. O, oh, yan yung starfish. No? Yung starfish, kahit putulin mo yan, mag-grow ulit yan. No? So, it's capable of regeneration. Uh, tsaka yung lizard, di ba? Yung tail ng lizard, kahit putulin mo yan, uh, mag-grow ulit yan. So, starfish, uh, lizard. So, what causes dysentery? Uh, dysentery, yan yung may blood sa ating mga stool, no? sa waste natin, may blood. So, that's dysentery. And what causes dysentery? In time web ba? Histolistica. In time web ba? Histolistica. So, uh, it's an amweba. No? So, what that causes this dysentery. Alright. What is the liquid component of blood? We call that plasma. And the fourth state of matter, it's also plasma. So, again, mga previous board exam questions ito na lumabas dati na. Previous nila. <laughs> so, lumabas dati. So, sana, uh, I hope it's good na uh, na-introduce na sa inyo. No? So, plasma is a liquid component of blood. And the fourth state of matter, eh, we call that plasma as well. No? So, tananong na ito dati. Ah, what is the fourth state of matter? So, that is plasma. Example of plasma is um, yung lightning, no? yung sun. Oh, so, let's see, plasma, yung mga auroras, di ba? Aurora borealis, aurora australis uh, sa south, sa south na area. Oh, so, mga plasma yan na uh, state of matter. Okay, so, we'll start with the first question. So, this is a board exam question last March 2019, uh, last March 19, 2023. So, this year, so, sa time namin, lumabas to. Okay, so you can comment your answers and uh, it's okay if you don't, uh, you're not familiar with the concept, with the uh, question. So you can just guess. No? So what is the highest level in taxonomy? So ano nga ba dito? Is it kingdom? 
is it domain genus or species so kindly comments your comment your answers so lumabas na to sa gen ed sa gen ed na lumabas to sa gen ed gen ed science the highest level in taxonomy is it kingdom domain genus species so it's okay if we if uh, wrong yung sagot natin because mas ma-remember natin yan. <laughs> Trust me, mas ma-remember mo kasi kapag nakuha, na wrong, nakuha mong wrong yung uh, sagot mo kay, la, kay sa uh, ma, uh, for a while. Alright. So, a lot of answers here. We got B and some answers, uh, king, answered kingdom. All right. So, ano nga ba ang sagot natin dito? Okay. So, the highest level in taxonomy is, okay, correct. That would be letter B, the domain. So, domain is the highest level. So, this is quite tricky na question kasi pwede nilang ibahin yung mga choices. So, dapat memorize mo yung level of taxonomy. So, this one. So, this is the level of taxonomy. We have domain at first, then kingdom. Phylum, class, we have order, family, genus, and species. So we have mnemonics for that one para uh, it would be easier na ma-memorize <laughs> ma natin. So dream ko pumasa because our family gets swell though. So diba? it would be easier to memorize dream ko pumasa because our family gets swell though. So you have to uh, substitute lang. So dream, D, so domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species okay so dream ko pa masa course our family gets well though so the highest level in taxonomy according sa choices natin is domain so pag walang domain oh, of course you have to answer kingdom okay so remember this uh kasi quite tricky siya kasi dapat alam natin yung uh up yung uh this one you no know, pag sunod sunod <laughs> kasi okay so uh, this question Based on this question, so which of the following is the highest level in taxonomy? Oh, wala nang, wala nang domain. So, anong sagot natin dito? So, remember the mnemonics, dream ko pumasa because our family gets swell though. Diba, quite tricky siya kapag uh, hindi mo alam yung pasunod, <laughs> pagsunod-sunod ng levels of taxonomy kasi mag ka sa choices. So, what's our answer for this one? The highest level in taxonomy uh, based sa choices natin. Is it order? Is it family? Phylum? Or is it class? Okay. So, kindly uh, comment your answers. So, again, it's okay if you guess it's wrong. You say, mas, di ba, ang, maram, ang mas maraming mali, mas marami siyang natututunan. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, mas marami siyang natututunan. And that's good. Na maram, mas marami kang natututunan. And must my remember mo yan. Okay. So, based sa levels of taxonomy, taxonomy. Okay. So, we have the highest level here would be correct. Okay. It would be phylum. No? So, rememorize this one, ha? Dream ko pumaza because our family gets sweldo. So, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Okay. By the way, walang word sa biology, walang word na species, ha? Kahit singular pa yan. Species pa rin yan with S. Species. So, so, biology, it would always be species. Okay? So, uh, for us, humans, so ito yung sa kingdom natin, we belong in Animalia. Um, by the way, domain natin is uh, Eukarya. No? Yung mga eukaryotic cells. Meron tayong eukaryotic cells. And phylum natin is Chordata. We are under class Mammalia. No? Mga mammals tayo. Meron tayong mammary gland. And our order is primates. Family natin is homonidae, genus is homo, and we are homo sapiens. Diba? Kaya, kaya nga tinatawag niya yung homo sapiens. Our binomial nomenclature or our scientific name is homo sapiens. So, sa binomial nomenclature or sa scientific name, ginagamit niya dyan is the genus and the species. So, yan yung parang ginagamit natin na standard. Diba? Kasi uh, sa iba't ibang lugar, iba't iba naman yung tawag natin. For example, sa isang halaman. So, here in the Philippines, ang tawag natin dyan sa halaman is iba. Sa other country is iba naman yung tawag. So, para may uh, unity, <laughs> para uniform yung tawag is ginagamit natin ng scientific name. So, the scientific name is uh, genus and species, using the genus and species. Now, for us humans, we are homo sapiens. Okay? 
So that's our scientific name. Uh, that's our binomial nomenclature. Okay, so thank you for those na sumagot. <laughs> and okay, so for those also na nagkamali, so that's good na meron kayong natutunan for tonight. Alright, let's proceed. So, two organisms can be identified belonging to the same species if they can what? So, kailan natin masasabi na same yung species ng ang isang organism? Is it because A, they eat the same kind of food? B, they breed in a natural setting? C, they survive together in nature? Or is it D, they live together in an ecosystem? Okay, ano yung sagot natin dito? Uh, they can be identified belonging to same species. No, tayo na natin matatawag na same yung species ng organism. Right? Okay. So, merong sumagot. Letter D. We have C. Okay. So, ano kaya ang sagot natin dito? <laughs> Alright. So, two organisms can be identified belonging to the same species if... They can breed in a natural setting, right? So, dap, yan lang natin matatawag na same sila yung, same yung species nila, di ba? Di ba ang dog at saka yung cat, hindi naman pwede magbe-breed yan eh. So, kasi hindi nga sila same species. So, dapat ang tao, magkigmate ang tao sa tao lang din, no? Mag-reproduce tayo sa tao lang din kasi same yung species natin. Natural yung setting. Yung mga hybrid natin, kaya merong mule. Kailangan nyo yung mule, yung half donkey at uh, half horse. no So, hindi yun natural. So, kasi hindi sila same species. So, may, isa yun sa para ma-identify natin na same lang yung species, dapat makabreed sila in a natural na setting. Walang intervention ng human. So, natural lang. Nag-reproduce sila, nag-mate sila naturally. So, uh, same yung species nila. Okay? So, they breed in a natural setting. Alright. Okay. This is also, pag makita, may makita yung star. So, lumabas na to last March. So, this is a board exam question sa Gen Ed. Last March. So, Sahara is to desert. Arctic is to what? Okay. Is it forest, uh, tundra, mountain, or grassland? Yung Arctic. Ano ba yung Arctic? Diba yung Sahara? The Sahara is the largest desert in the world. The largest hot na desert in the world, Sahara. So, Arctic is... Okay, that's correct. So, Arctic is tundra. So, Sahara is to desert and Arctic is to tundra. So, this is biomes, no? mga biomes. Mga biomes natin. So, we have four major. Maraming mga classification ng biomes, but we have uh, these four na mga major classifications. So, we have tundra. Oh, kagaya ng sa Arctic, you know, treeless na area. So, technically, uh, deserto din naman tong tundra. No? Kasi uh, treeless nga, from, um, based sa definition, it is treeless na area. So, it is also a desert. So, tundra, you know, yung uh, malamig na lugar sa North Pole, no? sa South Pole. Sa sa North, tinatawag natin Arctic. No? So, sometimes magkaka-interchange tong dalawa. No? Sa North is Arctic. The south is Antarctic, may sito. Antarctic sa south. Okay? So, north is Arctic. South is Antarctic. So, tundra is malamig na lugar. No? Uh, treeless na area. So, just remember the word treeless. No? So, that's walang, walang kahoy. So, tundra. At malamig yung lugar sa tundra. So, next is we have taiga. So, this is also a cold na area. Um, kita, nakita nyo yung twilight. Yung area kung saan nag-fight yung mga vampires, <laughs> 'di ba? So may mga halaman doon, no? matataas na mga trees at malamig yung climate. So that's taiga. So malamig pa rin yung taiga. And temperate, temperate area is ang keyword natin dito is mayroon tong mga deciduous na trees. Yung yung mga maple trees yung sa Japan, sa Korea, yung very aesthetic tingnan. <laughs> yung merong four seasons, oh yan, mga temperate areas yan. Yung uh, may mga na-fall na leaves na color yellow or orange na during autumn, during fall. So meron sa lang four seasons, they have spring, they have winter, summer, and autumn or fall. So mga temperate na areas. Okay, and for the tropical areas on oh, the Philippines, we belong sa tropical na region, tropical na uh, we are a tropical country. So, mainit na dito no, sa tropical. And sa 
sa tropical areas, dito rin rich ang biodiversity. So, we, we are the Philippines, we are rich in flora and in fauna. Now, flora is referring to plants. Diba? Marami tayong klase-klase ng halaman, lalo na sa mga faras, diba? uh, fauna. So, marami tayong uh, mga animals, rich in animals yung tropical na area. Okay? So, ito yung mga major natin na biomes. Tundra, we have taiga, temperate, and tropical. All right. So, which biomes grows tropical grassland with scattered individual trees? O, oh, ito. So, hindi ito uh, sub-categories lang to ng biomes. So, scattered yung individual na trees. Uh, this is also a previous board exam question. Uh, scattered yung individual trees. Uh, is it grassland? O, oh, ba? Trees na nga. So, hindi na ito pwede yung grassland kasi grass lang. <laughs> Iba naman yung trees at yung grasses. Is it savanna? Is it taiga? Is it tundra? Okay, di ba? Tundra is treeless. No? So, hindi din siya pwede. Scattered yung individual trees. Okay, correct. So, we have savanna. So, remember, have you seen Lion King? Sa Lion King, uh, savanna yun na area. Ang uh, setting ng Lion King sa Africa, di ba? So, ganito. Scattered yung trees nila. Individual trees are scattered. So, we call that savanna. Okay? Alright, so let's proceed to number three. So, my star again. So, <laughs> this is also lumabas dati sa time namin. So, what do you call the attachment from an orchid to a tree? Bird's nest into a branch of a tree are examples of. Okay, a bird's nest. Yung orchid, di ba? Yung orchid, naka-attach lang siya sa tree. So, ano yung relationship ng tree at saka yung orchid? Or ng bird's nest? Oh, no. Yung nest ng birds, yung birds, no? yung birds, tsaka yung tree. Ano yung relationship? Is it osmosis? Is it predation, parasitism, or commensalism? Sige, ano yung sagot natin dito? So, uh, importante din to, no? yung mga species interaction, yung relationship. So, alapat, alamin, alamin din natin yan. Alright, okay. So, the correct answer for this one is commensalism. Very good. No, commensalism. So, ganito, di ba? Yung mga, uh, tanatawag natin to mga epiphytes. Yung mga halaman na naka-attach naka sa mga branches ng trees. So, mga epiphyte, epiphyte plants, no? Mga epiphytes na halaman. Commensalism. So, this is mga species interaction. So, mutualism. Uh, palaging question dito is, ano yung relationship ng bees tsaka yung flower? Or yung butterfly tsaka yung flower, di ba? That's mutualism. So, both organism benefits from the interaction nila. So, mutualism. And when you say parasitism, so, yung isa naka-benefit, yung isa naman na-harm, no? Yung mga parasite. May mga parasite. So, parasitism yan. Yung isa naka-benefit, yung isa na-harm. And commensalism. Commensalism is, ang isa naka-benefit, at yung isa is, uh, wala lang siyang pake. Parang, <laughs> wala lang sa kanya. No, wala lang sa kanya kung, uh, like, Yung sa tree at saka yung orchids, wala namang uh, nakabenefit yung orchid, but yung sa tree, uh, it is not affecting the tree. So, that's an example of commensalism. The one benefits, the other is wala lang siyang pake, wala lang sa kanya. And competition, oh, both negative, di ba? Yung competition, um, syempre, pag may competition, so, may compete sila sa, <laughs> oh, shout out, Mildred Magadaro. <laughs> Ah, uh, ah, uh, competition. So, mag-compete sila sa food. So, syempre, uh, hindi yun maganda. No? Sa biology, competition is not good. Uh, so, parang may, may nag invade ng space nila. So, may competition na nangyayari. So, if uh, mangyayari ang competition, pag same yung source ng food nila, no? mag-compete sila sa, or same yung areas kung saan sila dapat, ah, uh, tumutubo, like yung halaman. So, magkukumpit sila sa nutrients sa soil. So, there is competition. Aminsalism. So, ano tong aminsalism? Yung isa na harm, yung isa is oh, wala lang, wala lang pake. <laughs> no? So, this is aminsalism. Predation. Oh, masasabi natin predation pag may act of killing. You know, predation ang tawag nun. May predator tsaka prey. So, ano ba yung uh, differences ng, ng predator at prey? Yung predator, yan yung kumakain, no? yan yung uh, uh, pumapatay. Ang prey is yung kinakain. So, kaya nga, palagi siya nagpe-pray na, sana hindi mo akong kainin. <laughs> sana hindi ako kainin. Kaya ito natawag siyang prey, okay? So, prey and predator. So, predator siya yung 
kumakain. So, predator and prey. So, my act of killing. So, that's predation. And lastly, we have grazing. So, mga grazing animals. Only part is eaten. So, ano ba yung mga examples ng grazing animals? So, yung mga kambing, di ba? Carabals, cows. Yung uh, kinakain nila yung mga grass, yung mga uh, weeds. Pero, uh, part lang ang kinakain. Hindi naman namamatay yung, completely namamatay yung halaman. So, part lang ang kinakain. So, that's grazing. Okay? Alright. Sige nga, uh, comment your answers. Ano, anong relationship ito? The tick and the dog. So, anong relationship ng tick at dog? Meron sa tick at dog yun, mga aso natin. Kailangan kunin tong mga, <laughs> mga parasites na to. O, ba Parasites. So, anong, anong relationship nito? This is Okay, uh, comment your your answers. All right. Okay, very good. No, no, dami na. <laughs> Parasitism. Okay, so the, itong tick is the parasite, no? Sa dog. So, that's correct. So, one is harmed and the other is uh, benefited. Nakabenefit yung isa. Okay, how about this one? No, a buffalo and itong mga birds na to. Ano yung relationship ng, uh, based sa pictures na nakita nyo? Ano yung relationship? This is? O, oh, yung mga birds. Nakabenefit ba yung bird? Itong, how about the buffalo? Nakabenefit ba siya? Okay. <laughs> we have answers here. Uh, Commensalism, are you sure? <laughs> Alright. Okay, so, actually, this is, sorry, this is um mutual. Sorry, sorry, this is mutualism. Kasi, uh, nakabenefit din yung Buffalo. Kasi kinakain, sorry, this is mutualism ha, kinakain din kasi ng birds yung mga parasites na nakadapo dito sa sa buffalo. Ha? Kasi this is mutualism, mutual to. So, nakabenefit din tong buffalo. Kasi, uh, again, kinakain ng mga, yung mga insekto, yung mga parasites no, na nakadapo dito sa buffalo. So, kinakain din ng mga birds. So, this is mutual, ha? mutualism to. Okay, how about this one? Ano to? <laughs> Nakapahoy ang birds <laughs> Nakapahoy siya yung lupad Alright, obviously this is parasitism no? So, parasitism So, nakabenefit yung oh, yung lamok <laughs> yeah, That ikaw ay na-harm Alright uh, This one, mga epiphytes na halaman oh, This is commensalism, obviously Alright no? So, naka, naka-attach lang yung mga halaman sa branches ng tree at hindi naman hindi naman napiktuhan yung trees no yung mga yung mga um, tree natin hindi napiktuhan so hindi siya uh, wala lang siyang pake okay lang sa kanya <laughs> nandiyan but meron yung uh, merong um, ang halaman is naka-benefit siya no naka-attach siya sa tree so examples of mutualism uh, mutualism is a type of symbiosis where two or more species benefit from each other no mutualism yung friend mo <laughs> friend <laughs> Yung friend mo na nakabenefit kayo both. So, humans and gut uh, bacteria. So, we need these bacteria sa ating katawan. Di ba nga? Kailangan din natin ng bacteria. So, we have good bacteria. So, yung mga bacteria natin, the species of bacteria is uh, 95% of it is good. No? Only 5% lang yung mga pathogenic, yung mga harmful na bacteria. So, we need the bacteria as well sa ating katawan. Okay, kailangan din natin bakit So, this, that is mutualism. Bees and flower, oh, palagi na itong lumalabas, no? Bees and flower, or butterfly and flower. So, mutual, mutual yung relationship nila. Mutualism. The clownfish and the sea anemone. Oh, so, may shelter yung clownfish, no? At yung anemone. So, this is also mutualism. Ants and the aphids, uh, lichens, fungi, and algae. Oh, this one also. Palagi na rin itong tinatanong, uh, lalo na sa biosci, no? so, sa major ship. Ano yung relationship ng fungi at saka yung algae? No? So, that is mutualism. The woolly bat and the pitcher plant. No? Itong mga pitcher plant, ito yung mga kumakain ng insekto. So, the woolly bat, pwede siyang uh, makishelter dito sa pitcher plant. And yung mga feces ng, ng, ng bats, so, maka-benefit, magiging nutrients yan ng pitcher plant. So, both sila na naka-benefit. So, that's mutualism. Alright, how about this one? Uh, ano tong relationship ng uh, nasa picture? Uh, this is you know, the crocodile and this bird. 
the plover bird ano yung relationship ano yung mars <laughs> ano yung relationship nito <laughs> angelio so what's the relationship okay so some say predation so parang Para naman talaga yung predation at first glance. Pero, you know what? This is mutualism. No, kasi ang bird na to, this is um, a plover bird. At hindi to kinakain ng crocodile. Kasi uh, kinukuha ng bird yung mga parasite na nasa. O kiniclean niya yung uh, ano ng crocodile, yung mouth ng crocodile. So, and this is really happening, no? Parang... Parang, ma-ama- parang ma-amaze ka sa design <laughs> ng nature natin ba. So, yung ibang bird, ibang species ng bird, kinakain ng crocodile. But this kind of bird, so, hindi niya kinakain. Kasi, kinukuha ng bird na to, yung mga parasite na nandyan sa kanyang mouth. No, kiniclean niya yung mouth. So, free nga cleaning. <laughs> so, that's the plover bird. So, this is mutualism. So, both sila nakabenefit. Okay, this one, oh, obviously, with act of killing, this is predation. The lion is the predator and the zebra is the prey, okay? So, this is predation with act of killing. Oh, yung hyena tsaka yung lion, di ba? Sa Lion King na movie. Uh, have you seen Lion King? So, ano to? Uh, lion King, the lion and the hyena. So, ano yung relationship nila? Kinakain ba ng lion yung hyena? Diba? Hindi. So, this is competition. No? Silang dalawa, uh, negative uh, ay yung both. Kasi nagkukumpit sila sa source of food. So, this is competition. Alright. Okay. So, let's proceed to the next question. Uh, previous board exam question last March. Um, what is the beneficial effect of scientific development development on education? O, ano ba yung related dito sa education? Is it access to recreation, access to knowledge source, extended kinship, family solidarity? So, what's our answer here? So, o, o, isa, lang, isa lang dito yung ma-relate natin sa education, of course, the knowledge source. Okay, very good. No, access to knowledge source. So, kung ano yung mga scientific discoveries, kung ano yung mga scientific development, so, meron tayong... Uh, through education, malalaman natin yun, no? yung mga bagong scientific development. So, that's access to knowledge source. So, it benefits the um, maraming bagong pwedeng i-include i- i- natin sa mga books no? pag merong mga bagong scientific discoveries. Alright. So, okay. Let's have the next question, number five. So, this is also the previous question. After an, so, Gen, Gen Ed has a Gen Ed. So, Gen Ed to lumabas. After an earthquake of 7.8 magnitude in 1990, the blank erupted. So, ano yung pumutok na vulkan? Is it the Teal Volcano, the Mount Apo, Mount Pinatubo, or is it the Mayon Volcano? Okay. After an earthquake. So, na earthquake muna, 7.8 magnitude, 1990, and then right after, pumutok yung vulkan, 1991 na. So, ano yung vulkan na yun? That would be Mount Pinatubo. Correct. Very good. So, that's Mount Pinatubo. Mount Pinatubo, uh, so, tri-point boundary siya sa Tarlac, sa Pampanga, at sa Zambales. It's a huge explosive uh, eruption on June 15, 1991. So, it occurred within 11 months of magnitude 7.8. No, So, nag-earthquake muna, and then the next year, pumutok yung vulkan. So, that's Mount Pinatubo. Okay. All right. So, a child at the top of a slide, so a ripe guava before it falls, a yo-yo before it is released, are examples of what uh, energy? Examples of potential blank energy. Is it gravitational, electrical, mechanical, or chemical? Sige. <laughs> the wrong si Jolly. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's a good. No, na. Again, it's okay. It's really good na. Mas ma-retain mo kasi, kasi kapag uh, na-wrong ka, kasi mas ma-remember mo yun. So, if you don't know, just uh, guess lang. <laughs> so, ano to? This is? Okay, correct. Gravitational. So, yung yo-yo, before it falls, before it is released, rather the grava, the ripe grava, before it falls. And the child at the top of a slide. So, that's gravitational. So, the force acting is the gravity. No, potential. Potential siya. Potential pa siya na uh, uh, energy. Potential gravitational energy. So, lumabas din to sa time namin. 
All right. So remember this, mga energy conversion chem from chemical to mechanical. So tanong, ano yung uh, energy na nakukuha natin sa food? What type of energy? That would be chemical. Okay, chemical energy yung nakukuha natin sa food. So when it, it when it is uh, in action already or the kinetic, so nagiging mechanical na siya. So yung sa flashlight, so from chemical to light, 'di ba? Yung uh, batteries, we have mga lithium ions sa batteries, so it's chemical, chemical to light energy. So that's um niyan yung sa conversion ng energy sa flashlight, no? Chemical to light. For uh, appliances natin, electrical to light, no? sa electricity. Chemical to mechanical, oh, so yung sa gasolina, 'di ba? Then it becomes mechanical. Uh, light to chemical oh, sa plants no diba the process of converting light energy to chemical energy that's photosynthesis diba uh, food production sa plants so light to chemical we have electrical to heat oh, so remember this one also and ang um, mga previous na uh, lumabas is diba yung sa generator ano yung uh, energy conversion sa generator generator so opposite siya sa motor so generator is Ah uh, sige nga uh, kindly comment ano nga yung uh, sa generator na conversion natin sa generator generator ay hindi mo ako mga comment no uh, join the chat uh, okay <laughs> So ano yung uh, energy conversion sa ating generator from what generator Oh uh, ano no sa generator natin Diba? Ang last is electrical, no? Okay. Alright. Alright. <laughs> okay. So, it's uh, mechanical to electrical. Correct. Mechanical to electrical. And opposite siya sa motor. Motor is electrical to mechanical. Okay? So, remember that too, ha? Kasi, uh, reverse lang nila, eh. Generator is mechanical to electrical. Kaya nga, we need generator pag walang electricity. Kasi kailangan natin ng electricity, no? G mechanical to electrical. And, motor, oh, yung mga sa electric fan, di ba? So, that's electrical to mechanical. So, opposite naman siya. So, right. Okay, let's proceed. So, half of the celestial sphere is called what? Half of the celestial sphere. So, anong tawag natin then? Is it semi-global? Is it mid-circle? Is it hemisphere? Or biosphere? Half of the celestial sphere. Okay. Alright, correct. So, we call that hemisphere. No? So, parang bonus na itong tanong na ganito. No? Half of the celestial sphere is called hemisphere. So, tayo, the Philippines, nabelong tayo sa northern, no? Nasa north hemisphere, northern hemisphere, northern hemisphere, and southern hemisphere. So, remember this one also, the Tropic of Cancer is in the north, the Tropic of Capricorn is sa south, okay? Alright, next question. Because it will adversely affect the population's food supplies, the most disadvantageous source of energy is, oh, ano ba yung uh, kinakain natin dito? <laughs> it will adversely affect the population's food supplies. Oh, so, dapat. <laughs> oh, shout out. Kasi may si Giging's vlog. <laughs> ah, Ronel. <laughs> shout out, Ronel. So, kahit LPT na, nanonood pa rin siya. Diba? That's good. Uh, na learning never stops, man. Diba? So, kahit na uh, licensed professional teacher na, we are still learning. Kasi even me, I'm still watching live sa YouTube. I'm still watching mga videos uh, sa Facebook. <laughs> I still read mga question, board exam questions so mga letter viewers so it's good uh, learning never stops man oh, ano dito yung adversely affects our population so food so supply if ginagamit natin siya as source of energy of course, ano yung kinakain natin dito of course yung mga plants, no? so mga halaman alright, number 9 what shows the flow of energy and materials from one organism to the next in a particular habitat okay, it's called what? Oh, flow of energy, the series of, um, oh, anong tawag natin? Okay, obviously, correct. So, <laughs> mga, okay, this is called food chain. Food chain to the flow of energy. So, mahalaga ditong concept ng food chain. Dapat alam din natin to. Sa majorship namin, ang, lahat, ang daming lumabas talaga tungkol sa food chain. Parang, mga probably mga, 
mga five or seven items tungkol sa food chain. So, ang daming questions about the food chain. All right. So, this one. Since most organisms consume more than one type of animal or plant or consume both, the transfer of matter and energy intertwine into the, so ano nang tawag natin dito, food consumer, food web, food producer, or food chain. So, marami na siya, intertwine na, it's a complex na. Alright. So, is it uh, still food chain pa rin ba? Pag uh, nagka-intertwine na yung mga uh, organisms, feeding, the feeding, Kaya, the feeding ser the series of um, feeding connection. Okay, tinatawag na natin itong food web. No, food web na. Uh, that's the difference between the two, the food chain and the food web. So, chain lang siya. So, ang chain, plants, uh, from producers, tinakain ng deer. So, the deer is the primary consumer. So, the plants here is the producer. No? So, kinakain siya ng deer. So, that's the primary consumer. At saka, kinakain niya ay yung lion. Kinain niya yung deer. So, the lion becomes the secondary consumer. So, this is the food chain. And then, the lion dies. So, babalik siya sa halaman. No? Nutrients niya. Gagamitin ng halaman. So, the cycle. So, that's the food chain. And food web, oh, ito na. It's much complex. No? So, kasi yung isang organism, marami siyang kinakain eh. Marami siyang, oh, pwede siyang kumain ng halaman. Pwede siyang kumain ng, um, ng meat. So, kaya nagiging complex na siya. So, for this one, the question here, oh, di ba? Uh, this, this one is lumabas to, March, last sa uh, time namin. And this one also. So, quite, uh, kung hindi mo alam yung uh, the difference ng two, so parang, parang food chain pa rin yung masasagot mo dito. But this one, this is food web already, no? Kasi mas intertwined, mas complex na siya. All right. Oh, this is a food chain. So the producers, you know, from they get the energy from the sun. Na tawag natin to mga autotrophs, no? Yung mga producers, mga autotrophs, autotrophs. So they can, they can uh, create their own food. So yung mga halaman and some species of microbes are autotrophs as well. So yung mga bacteria, some bacteria, maha uh, create sila ng kanilang food. So the grass is the producer. Grasshopper, the primary consumer. Tsaka yung grasshopper, kinahin siya ng frog. So, the, the frog is the secondary consumer. And tertiary consumer is the python. Kasi kinahin ng, ng, ng snake yung frog. So, probably, bibigyan ng, ng ganito yung situation. So, ano yung tawag natin sa frog? Oh, based sa, sa food chain na ito. So, the frog is the secondary consumer. Alright. So, I hope that's clear. So, this is the food chain. Alright, so which is the correct sequence in a food chain? Oh, asan, asan ba dito yung correct yung sequence? Grass, wolf, deer, buffalo. Or is it grass? Oh, <laughs> may answer na. Grass, snake, insect, tsaka deer. Okay, so we have letter C here. Grass, insect, bird, at tsaka snake. Kasi hindi naman pwede yung grass, kakainin ng snake. Kung makain ba ng, ng grass yung snake, di ba? So the correct sequence here is grass. Oh, kakainin siya ng insecto. Tsaka yung insecto, kainin ng bird, and the bird is kakainin siya ng snake. No? So, mag-start mag talaga siya sa producer, yung grass. Okay. So, that's the correct na sequence natin sa food chain. Alright. So, okay. Let's proceed. So, we have here, next question. Plants convert into chemical energy, the energy from. O, oh, saan ba galing yung energy na kinakonvert ng plant natin? Making it into glucose, making it into chemical energy. So, saan, ano yung source, ultimate source ng, ng energy natin here on Earth? So, it converts energy from? What's our, what's our answer here? I think my delay sa, ano, sa comments here. Ah, okay, take lang. Um, what's our answer here? Okay, everyone got it correctly. So, of course, sunlight. So, the sunlight is the ultimate source of uh, energy natin. No, yung sunlight. So, dyan, we can, ah, dyan galing, sorry, dyan galing lahat yung uh, energy natin. So, the food na kinain natin, the energy is can be traced back from sunlight, no, galing sa sunlight. So, uh, uh, dito na naman to. Alright, so we have here, transformer. Uh, Di ba yung mga transformer sa poste? A transformer, uh, is it changes the voltage of a direct current? B changes the power of a direct current, or is it change it changes the voltage of an alternating current? And lastly, is it 
Uh, D changes the amperage of an alternating current. No? Nakikita nyo to sa mga poste. So, this is what we call transformers. Ano ba yung role? Ano ba yung function ng transformers natin? So, kanil kalimitan pag uh, may mga dis disco <laughs> during fiestas, nilalagyan ng transformers yung mga poste. So, ano ba yung ginagawa ng transformers? Mga transformers natin. Alright. Okay. So, Sir John E. Uh, answered letter C. How about the others? Okay. Alright. So, this one. Okay. Sir John, you are correct. Very good. So, it changes the voltage. No? Meron tayong kinds, two, time, two types of transformers, the step up and the step down. So, the step up, it increases the the voltage. No? The voltage. So, the step down, oh, yan, it decreases the voltage. So, kaya nga, may nilalagyan ng stop transformers pag may mga fiestas, no? Kasi kailangan ng mal malalaki yung ano sa sound system. So, it needs a huge amount of voltage, no? So, kailangan ng transformer. It changes the voltage of alternating current, no? Yung current naman natin, meron tayong dalawa. Direct current, no? The DC or the alternating current, AC. So, sa DC, o, tinanong din siya sa major shape namin last time. Ano yung current na nasa batteries? So, mga batteries. So, that's DC. No? Sa battery, direct current yan sa DC. Uh, sa batteries. And yung mga sa appliances natin sa bahay, yung mga appliances natin, AC na yan. No? Alternating current na yan. Sa battery, that's direct current. Okay. So, transformer, it changes the voltage. No? Alternating current. Um, that's the role of transformers. Either step up or step down. Okay. The source of energy, okay, uh, bumalik na doon. The source of energy in an ecosystem, saan nga galing yung source of energy natin? Uh, the ultimate source of energy, di ba? Okay, so that would be, uh, of course, sunlight. No? Galing pa rin yan sa sunlight, the source of energy. So, galing talaga lahat sa ating sun. Alright, let's proceed. Which, uh, which among the following represents the smallest unit of life? The smallest unit of life. The basic unit of life. Oh, ano, ano tong, anong sagot natin dito? The basic unit of life. Uh, let me just open the YouTube. Parang delay kasi yung comments nyo dito sa uh, notifications. Okay, so, ano yung smallest unit of life? We have, uh, <laughs> smallest unit of life. Okay. So, your answers, we have, okay, very good, cell. No? So, yan yung uh, indication natin na uh, that's a living thing pag meron siyang cell. No? Pero lahat ng living things, merong cell because it's the basic, basic unit of life. No? Kaya yun natin masasabi na may life siya if it has a cell. So, sa choices na to, virus. Oh, ito lang yung non-living, di ba? Virus is technically a not a living thing kasi wala siyang cell ang virus. So, pag tinanong, is uh, COVID-19, is it a living or non-living thing? Di ba? COVID-19 is a virus. So, it's not a living thing pag outside of the host pa siya. Okay? Kasi wala siyang, wala siyang cell. So, it's not a living thing. So, also familiarize the parts of our cell. No, yung mga parts ng cell. Uh, cell wall. Uh, we have the cell membrane. No, cell membrane is semi-permeable. It cell membrane is the uh, parang siya yung guard. <laughs> so, siya yung nagpapapasok at siya yung nagpapalabas ng mga mga substances. No, so the cell membrane. Then we have the mitochondrion. Uh, that's the singular for mitochondria. Mitochondria is the plural form. No, but this is the powerhouse of the cell. No? Parang ito, ito lang yung alam ng lahat talaga. No, lalo na sa mga hindi science major, uh, alam talaga yung powerhouse. This is the powerhouse of the cell. No? Diba? The mitochondrion or the plural form mitochondria. And we have the nucleolus and the nucleus sa center. Ito yung, nandito yung genetic information natin, no? the DNA. Uh, nuclear membrane, the chloroplast. Chloroplast, uh, makikita lang natin siya sa uh, sa mga plant cells. No? So, mga just the basic lang na function ng uh, mga main organelles sa ating cells. So, know that one. Cytoplasm, oh, ito rin yung wala sa virus, no? yung cytoplasm. Oh, meron pa palang amyloplast. Uh, amyloplast, oh, this one. So, Golgi body, they are also known as the Golgi complex. Um... The ribosomes, 
So this is the production of proteins, the protein synthesis dito sa ribosomes. The smooth ER, uh, the smooth ER for the production of lipids, no? so yung fats. Rough ER, kaya siya rough, it's because meron siyang ribosomes, ang rough ER. Then the centrosome and the vacuole. So mga, uh, we have lysosome, wala, pa dito, wala dito yung lysosome. The suicide bag, uh, yung lysosome. Vacuole, uh, this is um, mas evident siya sa plant cell, no, sa mga plant. Kasi malaki yung vacuole ng plants. Uh, storage to, ang vacuole. Storage siya ng water. Kaya malaki ang vacuole. And plants, kailangan nila ng malaking storage ng water. So, if you're going to observe vacuole, so mas maigi na plant cell at ang ating yung gamitin kasi it is uh, bigger no, sa plant cell. So, this is a cell wall uh, peel ng onion under a microscope. Uh, this one. So, it has a nucleus. As you can see, rigid yung cell wall niya. So, parang siyang bricks. <laughs> yung cell wall. Yung nucleus. Uh, may nucleus ito. Tsaka may cell wall. So, sa onion to. Uh, yung peel ng onion under a microscope. Ito yung makikita natin sa onion. Okay. Sige, let's proceed. When a plant cell is placed in in a hypertonic solution, the plant cell well, well, well what? Anong yung mangyayari? <laughs> ano yung mangyayari sa plant cell? Hypertonic solution. It, would it ex expand? Uh, is it B, rupture? C, shrink? Or D, have no effect on the plant cell? Hypertonic yung solution natin. mag expand ba yung cell? mag rupture ba siya? Mag-shrink ba siya? Or wala lang siyang effect, effect sa ating plant cell. Okay, so iba-iba ang sagot natin. So, this would be shrink. Okay, hyper. Kasi meron tayong uh, tatlong solution. Hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solution. Uh, uh, para mas madaling ma-remember, uh, ma hyper Hyper, may R siya, di ba? Hypertonic. Kaya mag-shrink siya. Hypertonic. <laughs> mag-shrink ang cell. Hypertonic, mag-shrink siya. Okay? So, hypotonic naman, mag-swell, no? Uh, lalaki siya. Uh, lalaki yung cell. So, sa mga science major, uh, other term for uh, sa shrink, plasmola plasmolysis, no? Mag -ma -pla Kung walang shrink na option, it would plasmolyze, no? Plasmolysis. Pag hypertonic yung solution. Pag hypotonic naman, uh, cytolysis naman tawag natin doon, no? It would swell. Lalaki yung cell. Uh, so, saya pa ito yung, yung manghupong, di ba? Uh, so, that's uh, hypotonic. So, isotonic naman, oh, equal lang siya. Iso, di ba? Di ba sa triangle, isocelous triangle, uh, dalawang sides yung equal. So, may sides and equal. So, equal, isotonic. So, okay. This is an ideal na solution. Kasi, sakto lang. No, yung, yung solute ay yung, at yung solvent niya is just the same. So, okay lang yung cell. Happy na yung cell sa isotonic solution. So, hyper. Again, hyper. My letter R. Hyper. So, it would shrink. No, hypertonic solution. It would shrink. Okay, let's proceed. In which organelle of both plant and animal cells does aerobic respiration take place? Aerobic. Aerobic respiration. Oh, ano yung aerobic? Saan yung... Oh, this is the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> Kung saan natin uh, ginagamit yung oxygen. So, ano yung organelle na yon sa ating both plant and the animal cell? Is it the mitochondria, the lysosome, the chloroplast, or the Golgi complex? Oh, aerobic respiration. So, the site for aerobic respiration would be mitochondria. Okay? So, yan yung powerhouse ng cell and yung fuel. Ano yung fuel natin? That is the ATP, no? Adenosine triphosphate. So, kumbaga, if vehicle tayo, the ATP is our gasoline para uh, meron tayong energy. No? So, ATP. So, sa mitochondria siya. Mitochondria. Aerobic respiration. Mitochondria. Okay, living things are classified either aerobic or anaerobic as they grow or metabolize in the presence of what? O, ano yung kailangan? O, ano yung kailangan natin? Para, ano yung gas na kailangan natin to, to breathe? Okay, so obviously that would be uh, oxygen. 
So, kailangan natin ng oxygen. So, merong mga organisms, mga microbes na anaerobic. So, hindi nila kailangan ng oxygen to survive. Mga tanatawag natin sila mga anaerobic organisms. No? Mga microbes lang. Yung mga anaerobic. So, we need oxygen. Kaya nga, mga aero, uh, tawag na yung mga aerobic organisms. Uh, we need oxygen. Aerobic or anaerobic as they grow. Living things. So, kailangan natin. Uh, Kailang classify siya. Um, need ng presence ng uh, oxygen or absence of oxygen for anaerobic. Okay. Sige. Let's proceed. Coronavirus. So, coronavirus disease 2019 is caused by o, ano yung virus na yun? SARS, SARS-1, SARS-CoV-1, SARS-CoV-2. Sige. Anong, anong sagot natin dito? Yung coronavirus, yung COVID-19. Ano yung cause, ano yung tawag natin sa virus na yun? So, COVID-19. Okay. So, uh, may sagot ng A. May, uh, may a letter D. Alright. So, you've got correctly. Uh, you've got it correctly. SARS-CoV-2 virus. No? 2 na yung COVID-19. Kasi may outbreak na dati. Uh, year 2022 to 2024. Yan yung SARS-CoV-1. No? So, this time, the coronavirus, the COVID-19, is 2 na siya. SARS-CoV. So, severe acute respiratory syndrome. So, na-target na yung mga respiratory organs natin. So, SARS-CoV-2. Okay? Yung COVID-19. Alright. Let's proceed to the next question. Which of the following best describes a group of cells that work together to perform a function? Group of cells. Okay, group of cells that work together. Is it organ? Is it tissue? Organ system? Or organism? Group of cells. Group of cells would be? Okay. So, may nagsagot na. Oh, delay. <laughs> delay ba rin yung ating answers? Okay. Very good. So, you've answered letter B. Tissue. Okay. That's correct. No? Group of cells. So, we have to memorize this as well. The levels of biological organization. It would start from the cell. The basic unit of life, no cell. Then a group of cells, we call that tissue. And a group of tissue, we call that an organ. No, it becomes an organ. No, you same lang is so diba different organs. Diba? Ano yung mga organs ating katawan? No, diba? We have the skin. Skin, the largest organ. We have the heart, the lungs, yan, yung mga organs. So iba ibang tissue uh, sa ating mga organs. So a group of or uh, organs uh, comprises the organ system. And we have uh, 12 organ systems in our body, no? Respiratory system, the circulatory system, the nervous system, yan. So, yan yung mga system, system na yan. So, a group of organs. Then, an organ system comprises an organism. Organism, a group of organism, that's population. So, a population, same lang yung uh, organisms. Yeah, same lang yung species. No? Kaya na tumatawag na population, no? Diba? Tayo, uh, ano yung population natin? No? Siyempre, Mga tao lang ang bibilangan natin. Hindi din bibilangin yung mga mga cats, mga dogs. Kasi ibang species na sila, ibang organism na sila. So, population, oh, same lang yung species. no At, uh, In a specific area. Yan yung population. And then, we have community. Community is um, uh, iba't ibang uh, population na. no A group of different populations. So, mga living things lang ang kasali sa community. Hindi kasali yung mga abiotic factors. ba? Meron tayong biotic and abiotic na factors sa ating ecosystem. So, biotic is referring to oh, living living things, living beings. No? May life. Biotic nga. Bio means life. ba? Biology. It's the study of life. So, abiotic. Oh, ano yung mga abiotic factors natin? Yung temperature, so yung rain, yan yung mga... Uh, abiotic factors. Yung rocks. Uh, so, mga abiotic factors siya. So, sa community, mga living things lang ha, ang kasali sa community. Sa ecosystem, oh, sali na dito yung living and non-living. And the general term, biosphere. So, ito na yung areas sa sphere ng ating planet kung saan makikita yung um, life. Alright. Sige, let's proceed. So, these are living things that use sunlight chlorophyll, water, and carbon dioxide to produce food. Uh, kasali ito sa concept ng food chain. Diba? So, ano yung tawag natin sa mga producers? They can create 
they can generate their own food using sunlight. So, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green pigment sa ating mga halaman. And water and carbon dioxide to produce food. Ito yung mga raw materials needed for photosynthesis. No Water and carbon dioxide and sunlight. So, anong tawag natin doon sa mga uh, living things na makaproduce ng kanilang food? Okay, very good. So, everyone got it correctly. Tinatawag natin sa lang autotrophs. No? Yung mga halaman, mga autotrophs sila. So, they can photosynthesize. Tayo, hindi naman tayo makakreate ng uh, ating food. So, mga consumers tayo. So, we are called heterotrophs. No? Heterotrophs. Mga autotrophs, yung mga halaman. Tayo is mga heterotrophs. So, di ba? So, some bacteria. Some bacteria are autotrophic. They can create their own food. And some oh, algae, they can create their own food as well. Yung mga cyanobacteria. So, heterotrophs, tayo, mga animals. And most bacteria, fungi. So, that one. Alright, let's proceed. Uh, what do you call the process wherein plants make their own food? No? Di ba? So, ito, gas-gas na rin tong tanong na to, di ba? Parangin nyo tong na uh, kikita sa mga uh, review materials no, sa science. Ano yung tawag natin? Okay, so obviously that would be photosynthesis. So, sa mga science major, it is much complicated. Much more complicated yung process ng photosynthesis kasi meron tayong dark reaction, diba? may light dependent reaction, light independent reaction, or the dark reaction, or the Calvin cycle. So, mas complicated pa siya sa uh, ating major ship, um, ang photosynthesis. Uh, this one, remember this, photogo, and sell you, CW, photogo. Photo, photosynthesis, ano yung end product or um, waste product niya? End product would be glucose and the waste product would be the oxygen. So, remember this, uh, photogo, glucose and oxygen. Photosynthesis, ano yung product niya? Glucose and oxygen. So, tunanin na rin before, what is the end product or what is the waste product of photosynthesis? Uh, what's the gen ed? Tunanin sa gen ed. So, what's the answer? We have oxygen. So, just remember this one, photogo. Photosynthesis, glucose and oxygen. Okay? And cellular respiration. Ano naman yung product ng cellular, cellular respiration? Carbon dioxide and water. Okay? Photogo and cell U, CW. Cellular respiration, carbon dioxide, and water. So, ito yung kinakailangan sa photosynthesis. We need light, sunlight. Oh, sunlight, converting it into chemical energy. That's photosynthesis. So, carbon dioxide and uh, water. Yun yung need. As a result, magproduce siya ng uh, carbohydrates or the glucose and oxygen. So, this is photosynthesis. Okay? Ito yung process ng pag-create ng plants ng kanilang sariling pagkain. Okay, which part of the flower develops into fruits? Develops into fruits. Ano ba yung parte ng flower na yan na na-develop into fruit? So, yung mga prutas natin ngayon, ano, saan, siya, saan sila galing? Is it uh, the ovule? Is it the ovary? The petal? Or the stigma ng ating mga flower? Sige, anong sagot natin dito? Is it the ovule? Ovary? Petal or the stigma. Okay? So, we have answer, letter A. Uh, how about the others? Anong sagot natin dito? Ano ba yung parte ng flower na yan? Kung saan ang galing yung mga fruits? Okay, so, we'll have the answer for this one is the ovary. Okay, the ovary. So, yung ovary, uh, nag-develop siya into fruits. Ha? And yung ovule, nag-develop siya into seeds. Ha? Okay, yung ovule, seeds, ovary, fruits. Okay, ovule, seeds, ovary, fruits. So, uh, petal, oh, ito yung part ng flower na <laughs> kinatatanggal mo, tapos sinasabi mo, she loves me, she loves me not, she loves me, she loves me not. Yan yung petal, okay? At yung stigma naman, yan yung, uh, it helps the pollen, no? The uh, attachment ng pollen. Yung pollen is like the the sperm ng ating mga flower. Yan yung nagta-transfer to other flower para mag-reproduce. Yan yung pollen. Yan yung kinukuha ng mga bees natin, ng mga butterflies. No? So, it uh, it transfer. Uh, yan yung uh, naka na, umatouch sa kanila. At when they, uh, at pag dumadapo na sila sa ibang flower, yan yung nata-transfer. Yan yung, po, yung pollen. So, nasa stigma yun. So, uh, di ba, meron din tayong male at female na reproductive organ ng, ng mga flower, no? 
So, for the male, we have the stamen. Men. May men kasi, kaya male siya. <laughs> At pistel naman yung tawag natin sa female na, na part ng flower. Okay? So, we have the ovary for this one. Ovary yung uh, galing yung mga fruits. Pag tanano naman, uh, which part of the flower, uh, which part of the plant develops into the seed? No? San galing yung seed? Uh, that's the ovule. Ovule, seed, ovary is uh, flower. <laughs> May banat pa si Ma'am Mildred. I think I'm fallen. Fallen in love with you. <laughs> okay. Okay, may delay, you know, may delay nga, no? Maybe sa internet connection natin. Sige lang, uh, kaya to. Sige, let's proceed to the next question. Uh, what is the branch of zoology? O oh, ito, palagi itong tinatanong. Bonus na talaga pag alam mo yung study of birds. Anong tawag natin sa study of birds? Is it herpetology, etiology, uh, chondri, chondri, I don't know how to pronounce this one. And D, is, is, is it ornithology? Sige, anong, anong, anong sagot natin dito? Study of birds. The study of birds. Yun, yung mga lang, uh, mga, <laughs> mga birds. Ano ba yung, uh, iba naman yung langgam, langgam sa Bisaya. <laughs> yung mga ibon, mga ibon. Study of birds. Okay, we have, okay, correct. Uh, ornithology yan. Ornithology yan, yung mga, mga birds natin. Herpetology, this is a study of fishes. Oh, no, uh, etiology is a study of fishes. Herpetology is the study of reptiles. Yung mga reptiles natin, mga amphibians. No? Amphibians, yung mga um, uh, frogs, no? amphibians sila. Ang tinatanong palagi sa mga amphibians, ano yung karakteristik nila? They, they go back to water to breed. No? Di ba yung mga frogs natin, uh, bumabalik sila sa tubig kapag nag-mimate sila, nag uh, for their reproduction. Yan yung mga amphibians. Yung mga reptiles, we have mga snakes, uh, mga turtles, no? Reptiles yun. Tsaka yung dinosaur. Dinosaurs are reptiles. Etiology, uh, this one also, uh, tinatanong din to lagi sa study of fishes. So, sa mga isda naman to, yung etiology. Okay? So, birds, study of birds, that's ornithology. Alright. Sige, let's proceed. <laughs> yeah, fish yung itch. Uh, bird, uh, is uh, ornithology. Fungi absorbs the nutrients from dead organisms. In an ecosystem, what roles do they play? Ano yung tawag natin sa mga fungi? Uh, this one is palagi tong lumalabas sa gen ed and lumabas din to sa major ship. So, fungi. Fungi, uh, mga carnivores ba sila? Omnivores? Saprophytes? Or herbivores? Okay, so very good. So, everyone got it correctly no, sa comments. So, mga saprophytes yun, mga sapro tropic yung mga fungi natin. So, yan yung uh, role. They feed on dead uh, dead organisms. Mga necrotic na matter. Mga fungi. Carnivores, uh, karne. So, kinakain nila mga meat. No, on omnivores, uh, mga humans, di ba? We are omnivores. We both, we eat uh, both meat and mga plants, no? mga herbs. Ang herbivore naman, it's mga O kumakain ng halaman, di ba? Yung mga, mga goats, mga cows, yung mga baka, no? yung mga herbivores. And sa science majorship, much, much, mayroon pa itong mga types ang, ang herbivores, di ba? Some uh, mga, mga organism, uh, may specific na parts ng halaman kung kinakain nila. Kinakain ba nila yung leaves lang, no? yung fruits. No? So, may tawag din sa kanila. Okay. Sige, let's proceed. Um, Speaking of fungi, I remember Alexander Fleming, uh, the discoverer of penicillin for antibiotics. So, your penicillin is a fungi. No, penicillin is a fungi. So, it leads the creation of antibiotics for... Um, uh, yung kalaban niya, para mortal enemy na fungi, yung bacteria. So, pero, pag meron tayong mga infection, bacterial infection, we need antibiotics. And if uh, sa virus naman, vaccine naman ang kailangan nun. Kaya, we have vaccine, di ba? Sa COVID-19, kailangan natin magpabakuna. So, vaccine kasi sa virus for bacteria, uh, antibiotics yun. Alright, sige. Let's proceed. What do you call animals that feed on both plants and meat? Oh, ito na yung kanina. So, that would be omnivores. Na, omnivores tayo, mga, mga tao. Uh, except na lang sa mga vegetarian, di ba? <laughs> mga, yung mga herbs lang yung kinakain. So, for both, we eat both plant and meat. So, we are omnivores. 
So, examples of herbivores, cow, horse, elephant, parrot, yung caterpillar, termites, yeah, termites, mga wood yung kinakain na, yung sa, yung sa kahoy, koala, yung grass na yung kinakain ng koala, very cute, and the zebra. So, ito yung mga herbivores. Uh, mga carnivores naman, so, yung mga meat lang yung kinakain. We have the eagle, the bald eagle, the wolverine, African wild dog, yung tiger, saltwater crocodile, the orca, the great white shark, No, the Tasmanian devil, the Komodo dragon, yung mga carnivores, okay? Uh, marami din mga omnivores, no? So, they both eat meat and plants. Uh, like tayo, mga tao, we both eat um, plants and animals. Uh, plants and, uh, yeah, meat ng animals. So, kaya mga omnivores, tayo omnivores. Okay? Sige, let's proceed. Uh, number, uh, I think, yeah, i-upload po ata to ni Ma'am Jenny sa YouTube. No, for those uh, mahina ang signal today, Ma'am Catherine. Okay. Sige, let's proceed. Uh, it's a group of interacting plants and animals and humans in a particular area. O, di ba? Um, plants, animals, humans, puro mga living beings. Anong tawag natin sa kanila? Is it ecological community? Is it environment? Living organism or food chain. Interacting plants, animals, humans. Natawag natin sa lang. Okay, correct. E ecological community. Diba remember, um, iba is ma, ano pa sila dito, ma, parang, uh, quite tricky siya. Kasi, pag sinasabi natin community, uh, again, mga living beings lang, no? Diba? Plants, animals, humans. Hindi kasali yung mga non-living na factors. No, sa ecological community. Ecosystem na yung kasali ang non-living. So, for this one, this is ecological community. Okay, so, remember, again, remember this one, ha? The levels of biological organization. Memorize this one. From cells, group of cells, we call the tissue. Group of tissue it comprises the, the organ. Then, the group of organs. Sinatawag natin sa lang isang, isang system, ha? O na organs, so organ system, and organism. Then a group of organism, the same species, uh, that's population. And a population, dapat pareha lang yung species. Diba? Again, remember the species, dapat natawag natin same yung species ng isang organism kapag nakabreed sila in a natural setting. Walang, hindi, hindi, um, walang human intervention. No? So, we have community, a uh, group of different populations, and ecosystem. Ecosystem is... Uh, Community plus non-living. Yan yung ecosystem. And then we have the biosphere. Okay, this is the levels of biological organization. Okay, okay. So, di ba, itong tanong na to. Which of the following groups of ecological terms is in correct order from simplest to most complex? Okay, tingnan nyo yung choices. Ano yung uh, uh, dapat um, uh, mauuna? From simplest to most complex. Oh. Here, The simplest here is the cell, of course. And then, the most complex is the biosphere na. So, ano yung simplest to most complex? Uh, organism, population, community, ecosystem, biosphere. Organism, population, community, biosphere, ecosystem. Population, organism, community, ecosystem, biosphere. Or is it biosphere? Oh, wrong na to. Kasi hindi pwede mauna yung biosphere. Hindi naman siya, um, uh, the sim ito, hindi naman ito yung simplest. Uh, hindi din pwede mauna ang population sa organism. So, it's either A or B. So, organism, population, community. So, ano yung mauna? The ecosystem or the biosphere? Okay, of course, um, the biosphere. Ano, uh, the ecosystem. Last, yung biosphere. So, we have letter A. No, organism, population, community, ecosystem, and the biosphere. So, you have to memorize this one. The levels of biological organization. Okay, what ecological structure is formed by group of individuals of the same species living together in the same area? Oh, ito na yung uh, palagi kong sinasabi kanina. Same species living together in the same area. So, that would be the population. The population. Oh, ano yung population? Uh, ilan yung, uh, oh, ano yung population natin dito sa, sa Bugo City? O, oh, diba? So, within Bugo lang. So, yung mga tao na within Bugo lang. So, same area. With, mayroong territory yung population. No, within the same area. So, that's population. And dapat same yung species. So, ilan yung species? Ilan yung population natin sa ng, uh, ng mga cats sa isang barangay o sa barangay namin? Ilan yung population ng cats? So, di ba? Ganun. So, uh, binibilang yung 
cats lang, hindi kasali yung mga dogs, no? Kasi iba na, iba ng species yun. So, dapat same species, matawag natin na isa siya, uh, belong siya sa that population pag pareha sila ng species, no? Living together in the same area. That's population. Um, speaking of niche, itong niche, this is our role in the ecosystem. Ano, no? Ang niche. So, dito, makikita natin tong bird na warbler na bird. So, sa isang halaman, uh, sa tang tree na to, meron siyang different niche, ang different species ng warbler. So, no two species occupy the same niche sa ating ecosystem. So, dito, for the bay-breasted na warbler, they feed in the middle part of the tree. And then, the Cape May warbler, sa top naman sila ng tree, no? So, gabi na ka-perfect <laughs> ng design. Uh, the warbler, the yellow rumped warbler, dito naman siya sa bottom, sa base na part ng kahoy. So, dyan siya kumukuha ng food. So, it avoids competition as well, no? Kasi, uh, meron silang specific na pinagkukuna ng pagkain. So, na-avoid yung competition. So, this is what we call the niche, no? The role, our role in our ecosystem. Okay, let's proceed to the next question. Excessive presence of carbon dioxide in the air, trapping heat near the Earth's surface, causing a rise in temperature in the environment. Anong tawag natin dyan? Is it El Nino? Is it the greenhouse effect, uh, deforestation, or weather disturbance? <laughs> Shout out, Mildred. <laughs> Active kayo si Ma'am Mildred. No? <laughs> Hello, Ma'am Aubrey. Oh, Ma'am Aubrey is watching. So, anong tawag natin dyan sa excessive presence of carbon dioxide in air, trapping heat near the Earth's surface? Okay, so, Sir John. Sir John, palaging kumukamit comment, comment po si Sir John. Sir John answered, greenhouse effect. Which is correct. Very good. So, that is the greenhouse effect. So, actually, the greenhouse effect, um, it is good kasi uh, it, it is the reason kung bakit uh, nabubuhay tayo dito sa surface. No? Enough lang yung warmth natin. But, ang nangyayari ngayon, due to the human activities, such as uh, just due to the industrialization, yung pag natin ng mga fossils no? sa ating mga factories, um, it increases, the, there is a rapid increase of um, greenhouse gases, no? Kaya mas lalong umiinit na ang ating um, ating planet uh, because of the rapid increase of greenhouse gases. Yung mga greenhouse gases natin, we have methane, uh, carbon dioxide, no? The nitrous oxide or the laughing gas, at saka yung mga water vapor, yan yung mga greenhouse gases. So, this is the greenhouse gas, no? Greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect. All right, let's proceed to the next question. Which of the following causes the seasons? Seasons. Ano ba yung rason kung bakit may season? So, here sa Philippines, so parang technically wala talaga, wala talaga tayong season kasi we have uh, season lang, di ba? Summer, winter, uh, fall, at saka spring. But ang uh, ginagamit natin is the wet and the dry season sa Philippines. So, ano yung rason kung bakit may apat na season na yun? Is it the rotation ng Earth around the sun? The rotation of sun? <laughs> Ang sun ba yung nag-rotate? Uh, baka hindi na, hindi yun pwede. Kasi dapat ang star, uh, hindi yan gumagalaw. The rotation of sun around the Earth, the distance of Earth around the sun, or the tilt of the Earth on its axis. Okay, so sagot natin lahat. Oh, letter. <laughs> Bakit may letter N, Sir Marvin? <laughs> <laughs> na typo lang. <laughs> okay, we have letter D, the tilting of the Earth on its axis. No, yung tilt ng ating Earth. So, we are tilted 23.5 degrees. No, So, perfect yung tilt ng ating Earth. Um, a slight change sa tilt natin is hindi na tayo, hindi na, palang Earth, you know, hindi na habitable. So, grabe ka, perfect yung uh, so, parang masasabi talaga natin na there is really a divine creator, no? Sa, uh, yung location natin sa atong, ating planet, no? planet Earth, atong, atong location. If we are much closer to the sun, so hindi din yun pwede kasi makikrisp tayo or we are um, far, a little farther from the sun, so magiging malamig din yung ating planeta, so hindi din siya habitable, so it's just perfect. So, even ng tilt ng ating planet is just perfect. So, remember this one, the cost for the season? Only the tilt, huh? the tilt, the tilt of the earth and its access, the season. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, what organism would most likely be in an Arctic environment? Arctic, oh, di ba? This one is palagi na tong tinatanong sa Gen Ed. 
Arctic environment, we have walrus, correct? Oh, ito yung itsura ng walrus. Meron ka lang, oh, very cute. May, may fang sila, no? <laughs> Mataas na fang. So, it is found in an uh, uh, Arctic region. Uh, Arctic na area. Walrus. Ganito yung walrus. Di ba? Yun pwede yung maya. Turtle bats. Uh, dito yun sa atin. So, okay. Let's proceed. 23. Which is the richest type of tropical rainforest in the Philippines? Rainforest in the Philippines. Tropical. Ano yung pinakamaraming uh, type ng forest na meron tayo sa Pilipinas? Mulave. Marami bang mulave sa atin? Deptorocarp forest, mangrove forest, or the pine forest? <laughs> ano ba sagot natin dito? Richest type of tropical rainforest in the Philippines. We have? Okay. We have deptorocarp. No? Oh, ganito yung itsura ng deptorocarp. Marami ito, di ba? Marami tayo sa, sa mga mountains natin, lalo na sa mga mountainous areas in Mindanao. So, marami pa rin mga forest. No? Deptorocarp ang tawag natin dyan. Deptorocarp forest. <laughs> D na lang kasi. <laughs> A B na lang. Daghan man C. <laughs> so, we have we have deptorocarp. Okay, ganito yung itsura ng deptorocarp. No? Diba? Ito yung mga forest type of forest na nakikita natin. Oh, ito yung pinakamarami sa Pilipinas. Deptorocarp forest. Alright, the, the Philippines lies in the region where many volcanoes are active. This region is known as Yung tawag natin dyan, di ba? This is, obviously, we lie along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Kaya marami tayong mga vulkan. Marami mga active volcanoes sa Philippines. So, that's Ring of Fire. Okay, let's proceed. Which is an example of a renewable energy source? Renewable. Is it oil? Is it natural gas? C, solar power? D, coal? Uh, ano ito yung renewable? Easily replenished. Okay, so, uh-huh, may nagsagot ng letter D, or is it delay pa lang to? Uh, letter C, letter C, may B, oil, natural gas, or the solar power, or the coal, renewable. Okay, so our renewable here would be? Okay, solar power, no? Ang solar, solar energy. Kasi nandyan lang yung sunlight, eh. So, that's renewable energy source. But hindi pa siya na masyadong na-utilize sa country natin kasi uh, it is expensive. Okay, so renewable and non-renewable energy source. Renewable, example, we have solar energy, hydropower. Di ba? Meron tayong mga hydrothermal, uh, mga hydropower plants. Uh, ginagamit ang water at saka yung heat uh, to produce electricity. Geothermal. Oh, Siyempre, marami tayong mga volcanoes. So, we have mga geothermal power plants. Wind um, is also renewable. No, We have mga wind turbines sa Ilocos. Biomass. So, these are renewable energy sources. And let's go to the non-renewable. Ito yung kinukonsume natin. So, that's why our government is looking for uh, a lot of uh, organization is looking for for alternative na energy source. Uh, isa na nakikita is the nuclear na energy source. So we have a nuclear power plant here in the Philippines, but hindi siya uh, operational, no? Kasi uh, And um, according to to the current president natin is probably open siya by year 2027. So this is a nuclear na energy source. So, tinatawag na siya alternative. Alternative ang nuclear na energy. So, the concept of nuclear energy kasi, di ba, meron tayong nuclear fission at fusion. So, fusion, o oh, pag-combine ng uh, nucleus ng, ng atom, fission is the split. So, ang nangyayari sa nuclear sa nuclear power plant sa pag, uh, pag harness natin ng nuclear energy is that is fission. Nuclear fission. So, splitting of um splitting of the atoms no the splitting of the nucleus sa ating, ating mga atoms no yan, yan yung nuclear fission and during that splitting of atoms as nucleus it would release a huge amount of energy yan yung yun yung nangyari sa um yung bombing sa Japan sa Hiroshima at sa Nagasaki no, so, yeah, lumabas din yung question na yan. So, John Ed, kailan yung bombing ng, uh, sa Hiroshima? So, Hiroshima is August 6, no, 1945. And sa Nagasaki is uh, August 9, uh, 1945, August 9. So, um, that's nuclear, nuclear bomb. So, kahit 
maliit lang yung bomba na yun, napakalaki na kayang impact. Kasi sa nuclear fission, it would really uh, release a huge amount of energy. Kaya nga, uh, uh, alternative source siya. Even our um, government agencies, no, sa so DUST, the Philippine Nuclear Research Institute, they are promoting the use of nuclear energy kasi it would require only small amount of radioactive elements at it would release na huge uh, amount of energy. Okay, correct. Little boy and fat man. Diba? Tinanong na yan no? sa pre previous board exam questions. Anong tawag doon sa bomba? Diba? Pinangalanan pa nila. Little boy and fat man. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, the control center of the body. Okay, so this is no-brainer, diba? <laughs> control center. Uh, ano to? This is obviously the brain. No? The control center of the body. Oh, yun yung, yung utak natin, syempre. And our brain is different from other animals. Kaya nakasify na yung tinatawag na yun na top sa ating food chain is because we are mga rational beings. No? Iba yung pagka-design ng utak natin. Uh, we can rationalize. So, next question. Um, which disease affects the air sacs of the lungs and is common among cigarette smokers? So, air sacs ng lungs, yung mga alveolis natin sa lungs, um, it affects the air sacs. Common among cigarette smokers, is, is it asthma, tuberculosis, emphysema, or tracheal disorder? Ano bang sagot natin dito? So, maraming uh, mga ano dito. Kasi pag tinasabi diba, sa cigarette smokers, so we would resort to answering TB. But this is not tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is caused by bacteria. This is emphysema, ha? This is emphysema. A disease that affects the air sacs of the lungs, no? sa alveoli. Sa alveoli, dyan yung exchange natin ng oxygen at carbon dioxide. So, this is emphysema. TB is caused by bacteria. Okay? So, okay. So, this is emphysema. <laughs> Sir John commented, ah, hindi pa pala, hindi pala. <laughs> okay, so uh, even me, I thought it was tuberculosis, but uh, this is emphysema. So emphysema, I uh, remember this one kasi sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, this, lumas na to sa major ship ng biological science dati, no, emphysema. Alright, let's proceed. Bamboo is classified as, uh, bamboo, yung... Bamboo, is it bush, uh, shrub, grass, or epiphytes? Diba? Epiphytes, yan yung orchids, yung naka-attach sa branches ng trees, na mga halaman, diba? Maraming mga halaman na naka-attach sa branches ng trees. Natawag natin silang epiphytes. So, bamboo is, okay, correct. Bamboo is a grass, the tallest grass. In fact, the tallest grass in the world is bamboo. No, bamboo, mga grass sila. Okay, uh, let's have the next question. We feel warmer just before it rains. Diba? Uh, Manotis natin na, ay, pag gabi, uh, mainit ngayon, siguro uulan. Bakit natin sinasabi hindi ganyan? No, we feel warmer just before it rains because, uh, is it A, heat is released by the evaporation of water. B, the clouds prevent heat from escaping the earth. C, there is an increased relative humidity. Or D, heat is released by the condensation of water vapor. Okay, what's our answer here? 27. 27. We feel warmer just before it rains because oh, so diba pag sinasabi natin uh, mainit pag gabi uh, yan yung talagang common notion na siguro talagang uulan ngayon kasi mainit. Bakit bakit baka feel tayo ng init? Why we feel uh, warmer just before it rains? Okay? So <laughs> I don't know. Cuddle weather. Oh, sana all cuddle weather. Pero mas maganda pag meron kang kakadol. So, cuddle weather. Pero wala kang kakadol, Sir John. So, <laughs> lonely. <laughs> okay. So, we feel warmer because of condensation. Pero pag wala walang itong option na D, we could answer letter B, no? Uh, the clouds. But uh, for this one, the best answer would be the condensation. Diba? Condensation, yan yung uh, phase change from uh, gas to liquid. Uh, condensation. Gas to liquid condensation is water vapor uh, it would release water vapor so it is an exoter uh, it will release heat sorry uh, is it an it is an exothermic process no so magre-release siya ng heat so remember this one if better you have to memorize this no the phase changes from solid to gas so palagi na tanong dito is ang um, sublimation no palagi tong ulit-ulit na to sa mga board exam uh, sa gen ed uh, sublimation 
Sublimation is solid to gas. Example for this one is the solid carbon dioxide or the dry ice. No, alam niyo yung dry ice. So, that's a solid carbon dioxide lang yung dry ice. Diba? Alam natin sa carbon dioxide is a gas, pero it, it, it has a solid uh, form din. That is dry ice. So, solid to gas, that's sublimation. And gas to liquid, that's deposition. Gas to liquid, deposition. So, para mas maintindihan, you can uh, just visualize this one in your head. No? Yeah, ganitong setting. Solid here, the liquid is here, then the gas. So, then we have the plasma, the fourth state of matter. So, solid to gas, again, sublimation. Gas to solid, deposition. Example of deposition is yung mga snowflakes. No? Yan, yung sa snow. No? Deposition yung snowflakes. So, from gas, naging solid siya. Gas to solid. Yung mga frost. No, that's the position, the process. Then, solid to liquid. Oh, obviously, yung, yung sa ice, di ba? Sa solid ice, it would melt. If, uh, it would become a liquid water. So, that's melting. The process is melting. And liquid to solid, that's freezing. So, liquid to gas. Liquid to gas. Di ba? Mag-evaporate siya. That's vaporization. And gas to liquid, condensation. Okay? Then, gas to plasma, we have ionization. And plasma to gas is uh, recombination. So, memorize this one lang. So, uh, palaging question nito again is the sublimation. No, the solid to gas. Okay, so again, let's proceed. When water evaporates, it changes into which of the following states? Water evaporates. So, liquid water turning into gas. Ah, let's say, ko na sagot. <laughs> so, or wala pa ang answer dito. So, this is turning into gaseous uh, change, no? Gaseous siya na phase. Water evaporates, it changes into gas. Okay? So, in what state is most matter in the universe? Is the most mat uh, most sa matter natin sa universe? Ano bang phase, ano bang state ng uh, matter? That is pinaka marami. In fact, 99% of or is it 99 or 99 point something ang, ang state of matter pinaka marami sa universe. Gas, liquid, solid, or plasma. Ano sagot natin dito? Pinakamarami sa na matter sa universe. Okay. So, this would be plasma. Ha? Plasma ito. So, yung sun, di ba? 99% of the mass of our solar system is sa sun. So, kahit malaki yung Jupiter, di ba? Jupiter is the largest planet. So, wala lang yan sa sa sun. So, mass of our solar system concentrated sa, sa sun natin. So, mga stars, di ba? Mga stars, mga plasma yun. So, plasma, yung pinakamarami no? sa universe. <laughs> okay. So, examples of plasma, lightning, you know, the solar wind, which is responsible for uh, the auroras, no? Aurora. Oh, plasma pa rin yun. Yung mga ions uh, sa auroras. So, plasma yun uh, na state of matter. The aurora borealis uh, sa north Kaya tawag yung northern lights, di ba? The auroras. Then sa south naman, aurora australis. Mga fluorescent light, the nuclear fireball, no, sa nucleus, mga plasma yun. Examples of plasma. So, this is the fourth state of matter. Okay. Ano, brabali na lapas. <laughs> okay, let's proceed to the next item. The cell wall of plant is made of, oh, cell wall ng plant. Uh, I think, uh, na-mention ko na to kanina. Uh, is it lipids, cellulose, proteins, or cell membrane? Cell wall ng plants. Okay, I mentioned this one earlier. Cell wall ng plants is made of cellulose. Okay, remember cellulose? Ito yung pinakamaraming or, na, na organic, most abundant organic compound uh, on earth. No, cellulose. That's the cell wall of plants. No, and cellulose is a carbohydrate. All right. So at present, a patient fighter uh, let's proceed to the next question <laughs> so far guys 8-4 na at present a patient fighter uh, fight uh, cancer either through surgery or by subjecting him or her to a drug treatment called ang tawag natin so, sa uh, oh, ang tawag natin sa surgery na yun drug treatment is what we call oh sorry correct so chem chemotherapy and the thing with chemotherapy is ang um, uh, ma target na yung pati yung mga healthy cells no so that's why kailangan talaga if magagaw ng chemo therapy is uh, napaka strong no ng tao na naka survive ng chemo kasi tina target din pati yung nasasali yung mga ng healthy cells eh instead of just the cancer cells 
Okay, so let's proceed to the next item. Sugar and starches are cold. Uh, anong tawag natin ang sugar and starches are cold? Um, carbohydrates, B, minerals, C, protein, D, nucleic acid. Yung mga sugar, mga starch. Ano ba yan sila? Mga, okay, so mga sugar, of course, mga starches, are carbohydrates. So memorize this one also, the biomolecules or the macromolecules in our body. Carbohydrate, we have lipid, we have protein, and the nucleic acid. So itong apat na to, ito talaga yung pabida-bida na mga, no, mga needed natin no, to survive. So lahat ng forms of uh, life. Kaya nga, uh, biomolecules, Meron, merong apat na to. We have the carbohydrate, the lipids, the proteins, and the nucleic acid. The nucleic acid, uh, this is our genetic material, di ba? The DNA and the RNA. Proteins, uh, lipids, uh, ito yung mga fats, no? and carbohydrates. So, sugar and starches are carbohydrates. Okay, so again, let's proceed to the next item. The molecules that contain an organism's genetic makeup Oh, genetic makeup. Ano yung macromolecule na yun? Is it the nucleic acid? B, B, the genetic membrane? C, the cell membrane? Or D, cytoplasm? Genetic makeup. Genetic information. So, lahat ng organisms, my DNA, no, my or my RNA, my genetic makeup. So, ano yung, ano yung macromolecule na yun? So, even viruses have DNA or RNA. No, kahit hindi sila living things, meron silang genetic information. Yan yung blueprint natin, di ba? Yung genetic uh, information natin, yung DNA. So, that is obviously a nucleic acid, no? Na molecule, nucleic acid. Okay, very good. Sige, how about this one? Monosaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides are types of oh, mga saccharides, saccharides na yan. Ano sila? Is it proteins? Is it lipids? Is it nucleotides or carbohydrates? Yung mga saccharides, saccharides. Monosaccharides is a monomer of okay, carbohydrates. No? Carbohydrates sila. Yung mga... Oh, delay talaga siya sa YouTube, no? <laughs> yung mga, mga uh, saccharides, saccharides na yan. Carbohydrates siya. Okay? So, monosaccharide is, is a monomer of carbohydrates. For proteins naman, amino acid naman yung monomer niya. Amino acid. Then, lipids, we have um, glycerol no, and fatty acids. Uh, nucleotides for the uh, nucleic acid. Okay. Sige. Let's proceed to the next item. Uh, we have 32. Oh, may sagot na sa 32 si Mildred. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, kanina pa lang to na display. Uh, it is described as a lifeline of the body. It is the body's pickup and delivery system. Okay. Quite tricky to. Uh, we would immediately answer heart, di ba? Lifeline of the body or blood baka. <laughs> but we are referring here to the system. So either either of the two, the nervous or circulatory system. Delivery system man siya. Remember, naman siya word na system. Meron siyang system. So this is circulatory system. Okay? So circulatory system. Body speak up and delivery system. Okay, let's proceed to... 33. They are the transmitters of the messages from different parts of the body to the brain and vice versa. Is it the spinal cord A or B, neurons or nerve cells? C, the brain or D, arteries? Transmitters of messages from different parts of the body. Anong tawag natin? Ano yun sila? Uh, okay, your answers. <laughs> uh, our answers are Okay. Very good. Huh? Nandito pa si Angelio. Shout out, Angelio. Masin mag-tumbling-tumbling na kaniha, Angelio. Very good. So, this is neurons or nerve cells. No? So, this is really um, sentimental. <laughs> so, kasi lumabas sa board exam, sa major ship, what is the largest, ano, the longest uh, cells in our body, in the human body, the longest cells? So, uh, mga five minutes siguro. Uh, I contemplate ko ani. What's the what's the longest? So and luckily I get it correctly. You know, uh, I changed my answer. So my first answer was skin cells. Cause I in ko kasi skin is the largest uh, external organ, but the longest uh, cell would be the neurons. So I changed my answer into neurons or nerve cell. So and then right after I researched the correct answer, I searched sorry I searched the correct answer and 
uh, it is nerve cell. So this is the longest cell in our body, in the human body. You no, know, the neurons or the nerve cells. So we have neurons. And fun fact. <laughs> oh, walay. Yeah, walay, walay, ano. Walay, wala number. <laughs> Say lang. <laughs> so uh, neurons is we have uh, in our brain, we have mirror neurons. Uh, you notice niyo pag may tao na nag yon no so parang nagyo yon back din tayo at pag may tao na umiiyak parang parang naiiyak din tayo it's because we have mirror neurons now we have mirror neurons in our body so kaya pag merong taong nagyo yon merong sleepy so parang uh, parang nahahawa tayo sa sa yon nila so we have mirror mirror neurons okay let's proceed to the next item which part of the brain controls the following activities uh, breathing blood pressure the heart rate and alertness so mga involuntary na to na movements no breathing blood pressure so anong parte ng brain yun especially sa mga science majors uh, we have to study the um different parts of the brain no? magkabi ka complicated and the, their function so brain stem the hypo is it hypothalamus is it letter c cerebrum or letter d spinal cord so what's our answer here? Yeah, so some questions na walang um, numbers uh, kasi related lang siya sa previous na questions. So that's why uh, hindi ko nilang nilagyan ng uh, items. Anong oh, ng number. So sorry for that. <laughs> so anong, anong part ng brain yun? Anong kakontrol ng ating breathing, ng blood pressure, the heart rate, mga involuntary movements. Okay, so we have here the brain stem. Okay, this is the brain stem. No? Ang... Um, uh, so, we have to know the different parts of our brain. Uh, diba? The, main, the major parts is we have the cerebrum, cerebellum, and the brain stem. So, meron pa yung mga subparts. So, cerebrum, ito yung, um, uh, dito yung sa, ano natin? <laughs> Tawag dyan. <laughs> Kaya yung mga tao, yung sabi saya, yung mga dangas na, na tao. Malalaki yung dito sa forehead. So, diba? They would say na, um, they are smart. Uh, bakit, bakit sinasabi na smart yung mga tao ganyan? Di ba si Rizal, napakalaki ng ulo ni Rizal. Napalaki ng cerebrum niya. Uh, cerebrum is responsible for our memory, for our thinking. no? So, kaya, uh, kaya natin sinasabi na yung mga malaki, mga forehead, mga smart na na tao. <laughs> but, uh, dapat lang, yung brain natin, proportionate din siya sa ating body kasi uh, hindi na yung normal if Malaki yung brain, tapos maliit yung uh, katawan natin. So, the normal is dapat um, proportionate lang siya. And, okay, that's this is the brain stem. Okay, the brain stem. <laughs> that, <laughs> this is the brain stem. So, a little brain. Ano ba yung uh, question? Uh, what do you call the part of the brain uh, that is also known as the little brain? So, yan yung cerebellum, yung little brain. Cerebrum, uh, again, is the bigger part is a forehead so it is responsible for our memory for analysis analyzation logic cerebrum okay uh, 335 35 is science provides knowledge through disciplined observation which of the following is not a characteristic of scientific assertion so careful this of this one also the word not okay uh, it negates the question man so, if hindi mo manotice, if hindi mo manotice yung not, sometimes hindi siya nakakapital. So, hindi, um, it's uh, marong mar ka kasi. <laughs> Kakord ako mo, Tagalog. <laughs> okay, so we have here your answers. Oh, her say, okay. Her say, empirical support, data collected, experimental results. So, obviously, yung naiba dito is your her say, no? So, yung mga sabi-sabi lang, hindi pwede yun sa science. <laughs> hindi pwede yun sa research. Kailangan, uh, meron kang proof. Meron kang uh, empirical data. No, Empirical data, yung mga tangible na data natin using our senses. Diba, sino ba yung um, philosopher na empiricist? Yung realist, diba, si? Si Aristotle. No, Aristotle is realist. So, uh, according to Aristotle, yung reality natin is uh, based sa ating senses. Kung ano yung nakikita, kung ano yung um, natatouch natin, no, nahihear natin. So, that's according to Aristotle. Na yan yung reality. So, Aristotle is uh, a realist siya. And Plato, Plato is teacher siya ni, ni Aristotle. 
um, Plato is an idealist. No idealist to Plato. So this one empirical again empirical it needs no empirical data. Yung mga tangible na data na na-observe natin, yan. Uh, data collected no, for evidence. Diba? Importante ito sa science. If meron kang kiniklaim, dapat meron kang evidences. Experimental results. So, ito. This is uh, important for scientific uh, assertion no, sa science. Hindi pwede yung mga sabi-sabi lang. Alright. Let's have number 36. <laughs> Sanay ka rin. 36. The use of products. Oh, mga chesmes daw according to Sirene. Ma'am Sirene no, ang mga herses. So, 36. The use of products containing blank is discouraged because they contribute to the, to the depletion of oh, use of products containing A, chlorofluorocarbon, and the next uh, solar radiation. Uh, is it B, gas, ozone layer, C, ozone layer, and air, D, chlorofluorocarbon, and ozone layer. Uh, depletion of, uh, lastly, obviously, the ozone layer. So, so mga chlorofluorocarbon, so mga, may CFCs na mga products such as yung sa ating refrigerators, sa hairsprays, no? Parang, um, yung mga palaging gumagamit ng hairsprays, di ba? Marami yung mga CFCs and that is harmful sa ating um, ozone layer. No? It depletes the ozone layer. So, it can discourage yung paggamit ng chlorofluorocarbons because it contributes to the depletion of the ozone layer. So, the more na na-deplete yung ozone layer natin, the more solar uh, radiation would penetrate no, dito sa ating earth surface and which is harmful sa ating skin. Kaya, it could cause uh, skin cancer. That's why it is really recommended na dapat mag-sunscreen tayo every day. Even if na, na, nasa bahay lang tayo, we should... Um, put sunscreen no kasi iba na ang init natin ngayon uh, it is harmful no the uv from the sun the ultraviolet na rays from the sun okay let's proceed to the next item what causes high and low tides oh high tides and low tides is it letter a earth's rotation on its axis b moon's gravitational pull letter c sun's solar energy or letter d earth's gravitational pull ah uh, yes uh, good evening ma'am ria ruba <laughs> Welcome, ma'am, um, to this night's lecture. <laughs> so, is it um, Earth's rotation on its axis, Moon's gravitational pull, the Sun's solar energy, or the Earth's gravitational pull? Ano ba yung causes ng ating high at low tides? Alright, so correct. Everyone got it correctly. So, our Moon's gravitational pull. No, So, yan yung rason ko bakit may low tide, may high tide and some for science majors we have different uh, types of uh, tides, di ba? Meron pa tayong nip tides at spring tides so ano ba yung difference ng two so we have to know that one so spring tides is a nip tide so anong phase ng moon nangyayari ang spring tide anong phase ng moon nangyayari ang nip tides so sa spring tides either new moon siya or full moon uh, ang, ang spring tide ang nip tide naman ay either uh, first quarter or low uh, third quarter siya no na na the phase ng moon so ang rason kung bakit may high tide at low tide the moon no the gravitational pull of the moon okay a related question uh, solar eclipse oh this one palagi tong lumalabas sa Gen Ed. solar and lunar eclipse the solar eclipse occurs when when oh, sige uh, can you tingnan niyo yung choices solar eclipse Kailan ba nangyayari ang solar eclipse? <laughs> no, center. Uh, the moon is between Earth and the sun? Or the Earth is between the moon and the sun? And the, or letter C, the sun is between Earth and the moon? Or letter D, the Earth is bet behind the sun? So, ano ba yung answer natin dito? Solar. Solar eclipse. Okay. So, some answered letter B, some answered letter A. Alright. So, this would be letter A. No, ang solar eclipse, ang moon, ang moon yung nasa gitna. Moon yung nasa. Pwede, pwede lang, yan lang yung uh, i-memorize nyo. Yung, basta solar, yung moon yung nasa gitna. Solar eclipse, moon is in between. So, masasagot mo na yung lunar eclipse dun. So, solar eclipse, moon is in between. 
lunar eclipse is Earth yung nasa gitna. Lunar, Earth yung nasa gitna. Solar is Moon yung nasa gitna. Okay? So, just remember this one. Lunar, Earth. Solar is the Moon. Alright? Okay? Let's proceed to the next item. 38. Um, by the way, this is only 56, uh, 56 items. Uh, damage to DNA that is not repaired and then replicated can result in genetic disorders. This demonstrates what? Damage to DNA that is not repaired. Then it is replicated. Diba? Our DNA is being replicated. So, pag meron siyang damage, tapos hindi siya na-repair at na-replicate siya. So, ano yung to demonstrate so that is yan yung nangyayari sa mga cancer cells natin no so the damage sa ating dna tapos hindi siya na na -re repair and then no marami siya nagre replicate siya that is okay correct that is mutation mutation is a change in the dna sequence of an organism it can result from errors in dna replication during cell division expo exposure to uh, mutagens or viral infection and mutation it does not necessarily mean uh, bad siya, no? uh, sometimes of course it could result to good uh, same sa, same sa atin diba nag uh, namimutate yung na yung uh, DNA ng ating mga ancestors <laughs> kaya merong evolution so uh, mutation is important for evolution so um that's it that's mutation ha mutation na. DNA that is not repaired uh, which is being replicated that is a change in DNA mutation. Okay, right. Uh, let's have next question, 39. Um, this one also, paulit-ulit na dito sa board exam. <laughs> toothpick. O, wag may nakita na kayo, toothpick, uh, paperclip, yung needle, o ano yan. It sits on the surface of the water due to, due to, okay, very good, surface tension. Napalagi itong tinatanong. So, um, take note also, dapat um, yung mga easy na question for you, di ba yung palaging uh, lumalabas na, palagi na nasa nire-review, sometimes, um, ano yung taga? <laughs> um, mga talig, um, uh, uh, sometimes ma we get it wrong, no? Kasi uh, parang nagbabadali tayo, ah, ito, oh, may lang kita ka ng word. So, immediately, we would answer the, we would choose an option, pero... Um, we have to be careful with uh, yung mga ganito, mga tanong. Kasi sayang yung, yung point. And I believe kasi na every point, every item talaga sa board exam, it matters talaga. You have to give value sa lahat ng, ng item sa board exam. Uh, like, for me, uh, sa major ship, I have one item na... <laughs> Alam ko yung sagot, pero yung na shaden ko is uh, different. So, I get it. Uh, incorrectly but i know the answer sa pagmadali lang no so that is very sayang kasi point 4 ang major um so take note lang din sa mga items na yung mga paulit-ulit na rin so bonus na yun pero if you get it wrong kasi nagmamadali ka then uh that's very unfortunate a toothpick can sit on the surface of water due to surface tension. Let's have number 40. Number 40. Okay. What is the numerical value for the hardest mineral on the most hardness scale? So, oh, ano, anong sagot natin dito? Most hardness scale. Is it A, 10, B, 20, C, 25, D, 30. Ano ba yung pinaka-hard? The hardest. 40. Number 40. Anong sagot natin dito? 40. <laughs> okay lang yan, Sir John. <laughs> Sir John E. So, uh, good na marami kayang natututunan ngayon kasi, di ba, you're nahihirapan ka. So, uh, mabuti na you're here no, sa YouTube channel ni Ma'am Jani kasi marami kayang na-learn. Sige. Anong sagot natin dito? The hardest mineral in the most scale. Ano ba yung hardest mineral na yan? That would be the diamond, di ba? The hardest mineral. Yung diamond. Kaya nga, sometimes kinagamit siya pang cut ang diamond sa mga hard-hard har na metal. Kasi hardest yung diamond. So, that is, okay, correct, um, CJ. 
uh, 10 no 10 10 lang yun hindi hindi, hindi umabot ng 20 25 10 lang ha the hardest sa most scale so this is the most scale so kalimitan pag ganito may mga scale no uh, you just have to memorize the first and the last so, pag nanalong, ano yung hardest mineral sa most scale? Oh, that's the diamond. Yeah, ano naman yung softest mineral? That's the talc. No? So, basta mga ganito, usually, ano na tanong, only the first and the last. So, 10, yung diamond, yung talc is 1. Uh, for science, science major, so, what's better if we have to memorize all <laughs> uh, this 10 uh, mineral. So, diamond is 10, again, talc is 1. No? The softest na mineral. Yung sa mga chalk, no? yun, yun not talk okay let's proceed to 41 41 <laughs> anyway thank you no sa mga the comments so walang sawang the comments uh you're still with me <laughs> even if uh hindi pa, naman, hindi pa naman masyadong super late it's still uh 8 25 so 41 Part of the earth is thought to be composed of iron and nickel. Oh, bakit it's thought to be composed? Kasi wala pa tayong technology na nagdidig deep sa na umaabot sa core. Wala pa. Even sa mantle, hindi pa nga nakaabot sa mantle. So, it would melt kasi ang, ang mga gagamitin natin na pag nag-drill, di ba? So, hindi pa. So, parang it's still a theory. Dapat uh, iron at nickel siya. So, dapat kasi solid yung core natin, yung inner core. Okay? If it's not solid, so our planet would collapse. So, dapat solid yung nasa core. So, is it the lithosphere? Is it the crust? Is it the mantle or the core? Oh, obviously, it's the core. So, anong core is we have inner core and the outer core. Remember, the outer core is liquid. No, liquid yung outer core. And the inner core is solid. No, composed of iron and nickel. So, outer core is um, liquid. So, it's responsible for the magnetic, uh, natin ito, yung magnetic na, na di ba, our planet Earth is a big magnet. We have a north pole and uh, south na pole sa magnet. So, uh, it's another responsible dyan. It's the core, no, the outer core. So, you watch the movie, The Core. <laughs> it's a sci-fi movie. And the movie na The Core. So, it Marami ka rin malalearn uh, about the, the, you know, this one sa ating planet. The core, the crust, mantle, and the core. And we are here sa crust, the thinnest the layer. And the thickest layer is the mantle. Then the outer core is liquid. The inner core is solid. Composed of iron and nickel. Okay, let's proceed to 42. Number 42. Salts of which of the following metals are added to fireworks to make them brilliant red? Diba? Narotis natin yung mga fireworks, iba't iba ang kulay. Bakit iba iba ang kulay ng mga fireworks? Ano raso natin dyan? So, ano yung um, metal na nasa uh, color red na fireworks? Is it copper? Is it strontium? Magnesium? Or sodium? Sige, anong kulay? Ano yung kulay? Kulay? Uh, yung kulay red, ano yung salt of what metal? Sige. Uh, here answers. So, Sir John and Mom Sirene, Sir Marvin. Okay, very good. So, everyone got it correctly. So, strontium. Very good. So, strontium yung uh, red. So, here is the chemistry of fireworks. So, strontium salts would produce red fireworks. Orange naman sa calcium. Sodium is yellow. So, same din siya sa flame, ha? Yung sodium, yung, yung yellow na flame, so sodium salts. And barium, or merong boron. So, sa green, yun, green, bright green yung uh, result niya. For blue, it's always, no, copper. Blue, ay, blue, copper. Diba, copper? So, blue ang color niya. For purple, a uh, combination of copper and strontium. Silver is magnesium and aluminum. For white, no, combination siya ng magnesium, aluminum, titanium, dyan. So, it is, this is the chemistry of fireworks. Okay, let's proceed to the next item. What does a pH below 7 indicate? So, I'm just not throwing a lot of questions. Kasi sa general education, um, 
it is mga trivial talaga, mga trivial questions. So the more nga mara- marami kang mga facts na nalaman, mas better kasi it's like, 'di ba, pag pumunta ka ng gera, mas marami marami, mas maganda pag marami kang bala. So the better if marami kang alam. 'Di ba kaya kasi sa Gen Ed, if hindi mo talaga alam, mahirapan ka talaga. You just have to if wala ka nang options, you would resort to guessing na lang. Kasi Uh, hindi mo ma <laughs> apply yung ano yung analysis di ba pag yung mga trivial na questions so you have to guess so much better mas marami kang alam so sa so Gen Ed mas better na you have to read questions every day mga facts no uh, you look at the subjects sa TUS natin marami nang new sa science eh, up, included na ang technology no science and technology na siya what is a pH below seven below seven Oh, okay, so this is oh, an acid, no acidity, an acid, below 7 acid, and above 7 would be a basic, no basic, base na, oh, alkalinity and basic sa solution, no, same lang siya. Metalloid, diba, ano yung metalloid, ganina sa keywords natin, metalloids is, um, has properties of both metal and non-metal, no, not in between siya, sa metal and non-metal, so, before, um, They were scientists were confused if uh, ano ba siya metal ba siya na element or non-metal so it possesses both characteristics of metal and non-metal kaya kinaklasify siya into metalloid. Oh, ito yung pH scale natin ha, from 0 to uh, 14. So ito yung sa scale natin, 0 to 14. Um okay, so sa battery so it's an acid no acidic sa ating sa ating stomach we have HCl sa ating stomach uh, acid so that's why uh, hindi rin maganda na uh, yung di ba yung may magkaroon tayo ng acid reflux uh, if we eat uh, mga sour na na pagkain or we drink too much soft drinks di ba ang soft drinks kay uh, it is an acid no acidic siya. So may acid na yung katawan natin <laughs> at palagi pa tayong umiinom ng mga acidic na mga drinks. So that is harmful na. So acid uh, HCl, HCl is one. Diba so grabe. <laughs> grabe ang ay kanya acidity ba? It's very uh, acidic. But our body, yung stomach natin, may mga linings yung stomach natin na uh, yung mga mucus sa ating stomach. It is the reason ko bakit hindi nasusunog yung mga uh, organs natin sa ating stomach. Grabe yung acid, no? It's one. Grabe ka acidic. So, yan yung uh, nagpapa... Ang tawag ng Tagalog? Nagpapa... <laughs> yung nagpapa... <laughs> Basta yung uh, nagano ng ating mga food. So, uh, yung, yung acid. Kasi napaka-acidic yun. Then, we have lemons. Two, no acidic din yung lemons no vinegar yung tomato our milk ha our milk is an acid kaya hindi siya recommended sa mga may mga hyper acidity yung palaging uminom ng gatas kasi acidic yung milk natin it's six so slightly acidic lang siya but not too much na acidic so even our coffee yung mga mahilig sa kape <laughs> oh that's acidic yung mga kape natin Water is neutral. Water is seven. No seven siya. Um, mga um, um, water is amphoteric na substance. It can act as an acid. It can act as a base. No ang seven. Neutral yung seven. Oh, our blood in our body is slightly basic. Ha, yung blood sa katawan natin. Oh, basic siya. Then, oh, mga baking soda, ammonia, bleach. Mga ginagamit to pang, pang clean. So, it, it, it reacts with the dirt kasi yung mga base. Di ba? Yung mga base, uh, sabon, uh, toothpaste, yan. So, mga base, yan. Pang cleaning, mostly pang cleaning talaga siya. It, it would react with the dirt yung, lalo na sa ammonia solution. No? So, bleach, yung mga basic na substances. Again, the, the seven is neutral. No water. So, acidic. Uh, from zero to six, acidic siya. Below 7, man, below 7. And above 7, that's basic, no, or alkaline. Okay, so again, let's proceed to the next item, 44. 
Uh, the red tide phenomenon causes what particular marine organism to be poisonous for human consumption? O, ano lang ba yung kinakain natin dito? <laughs> red tide, red tide. Uh, particular causes what particular marine organism to be poisonous for human consumption? Is it uh, either A, sponges, B, mollusk, C, earthworms, or D, is it algae? Oh, obviously, ang kinakain natin, oh, meron namang mga tao makain, <laughs> mga worms, di ba? So, oh yeah, so some uh, algae said. So, mollusk, no? This is mollusk. Ang sagot natin, mollusk, yung mga clumps, yung um, mga octopus, yan, mga mollusk, yan sila. So, sponges, oh, di ba? Si, si Spongebob, mga porifera sila. Earthworms, ano yung ma-remember natin sa earthworms, di ba? Mga hermaphrodite yung earthworms. So, they can uh, reproduce through fragmentation. Meron silang um, male and the female na uh, needed for reproduction yung mga earthworms. Di ba? Meron ding mga tao, mga rare case lang na may, may male at female na reproductive organ na mga hermaphrodite. Okay. Sige, let's proceed to 45. Uh, item 45. The technology that uses plants to break down or concentrate toxic waste in the soil is called what? Oh, ginagamitan, ginagamitan natin ng mga halaman. Break down, mga toxic waste sa soil. Anong tawag natin doon? Uh, thank you, Sir John. No, Sir John, active kasi Sir John E sa ating comments. <laughs> Sige. Ano tawag natin to? Diba, Mildred answered IDK. <laughs> Very honest. So, ano tawag natin sa paggamit natin sa mga halaman? No, kukunin natin yung mga toxic na waste sa mga toxic na metal, no, or the mercury sa ating mga soil. Ginagamitan natin ng halaman. So, what we call that phytoremediation. Okay, so ang um, example, oh, yung sunflower. This is very effective for uh, removing mga toxic na mga chemicals sa ating mga soil. Or, especially sa mga near nuclear na mga power plants. No, kasi it is, uh, we are using more radioactive elements sa nuclear power plants. And that is toxic, man. That is not, that is harmful for, um, animals, no, for humans, no, for organisms. So, ginagamitan ng plants. So, phyto, phyto, di ba? Phyto, plants. Phytoremediation. So, we call that phytoremediation, okay? Hello? Ah, taga Surigao pala si <laughs> Sir John. Uh, meron din tayong uh, ginagamit din natin ng bacteria to clean uh, the, the toxic na mga substances. Di ba sa plants, uh, we call that phytoremediation. Sa bacteria, sa mga microbes, we call that, ano tawag natin dyan? Bioremediation. No, bioremediation naman siya. Diba? Phytoremediation for plants, bioremediation for the bacteria. Okay. Which of the following is an example of a useful function of bacteria? Is that letter A, can clean up oil spill by digesting hydrocarbons? B, may be pathogenic and cause human disease. O, diba? It's, it's wrong already kasi ang tinatanong natin, useful function of bacteria, it can cause human disease. So, it's not the obvious, obviously, it's not the correct answer. Letter C, can synthesize new forms of heavy metals. Heavy metals are harmful. No? D, may be used as vectors to introduce proteins. Sige, ano ba yung um, useful na gamit ng bacteria? So, this is an example of bioremediation. Okay, we have here letter A. Okay, this is letter A. Can clean up oil spill by digesting hydrocarbons. Diba, oil spill is harmful sa uh, bodies of water natin, no? So, maraming mga news recently lang, diba, na mga oil spill sa ating ocean. And that is harmful. So, ginagamitan ng bacteria to remove that no, to break down the hydrocarbons using, using the bacteria. So, we call that bioremediation. For the plants, natawag natin phytoremediation. So especially near sa mga factories, near sa mga um, power plants because that is, uh, yung radiation napaka 
harmful ng radiation. And di ba, yan yung um, the main cause of cancer, you know, yung radiation. So, importante din, uh, that's why there's been a debate if i-open ba ni uh, Marcos yung nuclear power plant sa Bataan kasi nga, it needs proper regulation kasi harmful siya. Um, studies have shown na yung mga tao na di ba, nakasurvive, yung mga descendants sa mga tao na nakasurvive sa sa nuclear uh, near near sa uh, dun sa Japan ng nuclear bomb yung, um, they develop uh, cancers because uh, napaka laki ng radiation noon sa nuclear nung sa nuclear bomb so it is very harmful so that's why ginagamitan nito ng mga plants phytoremediation for plants bacteria mga microbes is bioremediation Okay, but we can, if walang phytoremediation sa plants, we can um, we can still answer bioremediation because plants are still living things, no? Bio pa rin siya. Uh, there's still life. Okay, let's proceed to 46. How many bones does an adult human body has? Okay, uh, Sir John. 206. Uh, very good. Okay, so that is 206. So, uh, question. Um, ano ba yung mas uh, mas maraming bones, yung mga babies o tayong mga adult na? Yung babies or the adults? Sino ba yung mas maraming bones? The babies or the adults? Sige nga. <laughs> Sino yung mas maraming bones? Yung mga babies or tayo na mga adults na? Okay. <laughs> Pero walang baby si Sir John. <laughs> Sir, mga Mildred, yung baby ko. <laughs> okay, that's correct na, yung mga babies. Kasi mag-join eventually yung mga bones natin. Mga around 300 yung yeah, mga, mga bones ng mga babies. So, maraming bones yung mga babies. And eventually, as they grow uh, they grow up, no? so mas uh, mag-join yung mga bones. So, yan. Uh, 206 na. So, the longest and the strongest bone in our body is what we call the femur, no, yung thigh bone, thigh bone, yan, um, uh, lumalabas din yung tanong na yan, the longest and the strongest bone, no, the femur, so, or the thigh bone, okay, okay, let's proceed to 47, which of the following is protected by an exoskeleton, no, exoskeleton, like this one, the crabs, no, di ba, yung skeleton nila nasa labas, Tayo, <laughs> humans, may nakita ka pa ng tao na may bones sa labas. So, we are in the, no, in, nasa loob yung bones natin. So, hindi tayo, uh, wala tayong exoskeleton. So, ano to? Uh, is it periphera, B, echinodermata, C, crustacean, or D, the chordate? Alright. Sige. Oh, hi, Sir John Brexter. O, di ba, lalawang John na ang nandito. <laughs> meron John E at meron si Sir John Brexter. <laughs> mga ba, mga John pangalan niyo. <laughs> so, we have here uh, crustaceans. No? Mga crustaceans to. Yung lobsters, um, yung mga uh, to, yung mga shrimp, no? And they belong to uh, phylum na arthropoda. No? Mga arthropoda sila. Yung mga um, Mga crabs, lobsters, yung um, mga shrimps. Sila yung mga insecto sa sa dagat. O, oh, kumbaga. Diba, arthropoda also is, uh, mosquito is also an arthropoda. So, crustacean ha? Crustacean. This is crustacean. Porifera is, uh, ito yung mga sponges. Diba, si Spongebob? <laughs> mga spa, mga, mga uh, sponges. Echinodermata. Uh, Echinodermata is, um, the sea stars, no, the sea stars. So, so science, uh, hindi ang term natin is hindi, hindi starfish, <laughs> hindi hindi starfish, but sea stars ang proper term, no, sea stars yon, mga echinodermata, mga sea stars. And chordate, oh, we have uh, not a cord, no, as humans, mga animals, uh, we have uh, spinal column. So, yeah, this one, um, exoskeleton, crustaceans. Let's have 48. The bipolar nature of the cell membrane is due to oh, cell membrane natin. My bipolar. Ah, oh, maraming. <laughs> ano sa inyo, Sir John? Maraming mga, ah, sa mga, mga crustaceans. Bipolar nature of the cell. Is it A, presence 
of carries, <laughs> B, presence of oxygen, C, phospholipids, bilayer, D, integral proteins, bipolar. O, bipolar yung mga cell membrane natin. Uh, mga semi-permeable yan. Uh, it's because of the phospholipid bilayer. So, the tail, uh, remember this one also, the tail is hydrophobic. So, takot sila sa tubig. So, tail, hydrophobic man. Uh, hydrophilic, Oh, hydrophilic, they love water. Yung head ng ating cell membrane. Again, cell membrane, phospholipid bilayer, hydrophobic tail, hydrophilic head. Oh, we can just um, remember the hydrophilic head. No? So, mahilig sa tubig, hydrophilic. You love la, uh, water loving yung head. Uh, tsaka yung tail. <laughs> well, I, yung tail is uh, hydrophobic. <laughs> This is one then. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let's have 49. Okay, 49. Oh, diba? Remember this one? The finger-like. Oh, finger-like folds of the inner linings of the small intestine. Ano yung finger-like? Is it the villi, the appendix, the rugae, or the cecum? Sige. So, <laughs> we have finger-like. Oh, sa ating intestine. Small intestine. Small intestine to, so it uh okay this is the villi so it absorbs the nutrients no sa ating mga kinakain no the villi the finger like so again the hair like cilia the finger like is the villi whip like whip like is flagella um flap like flap like is uh, epig epiglottis okay oh tara <laughs> here here's like dito pala to epiglottis flap like and whip like is the flagella okay so, hair-like, cilia, finger-like, villi, flap-like, epiglottis, and whip-like is the flagella. Okay, this one, oh, this question. What is that flap-like structure? Oh, alam mo na, flap-like. Prevents the food from going to the wrong uh, way during swallowing. Uh, somewhere here, no? the, ep the epiglottis, no? the flap-like structure. So, it prevents the food from going uh, to the wrong direction no, when we swallow the, the food. So, let's proceed to the next one. 50. Okay, rapid na ta. <laughs> We're almost done. So, thank you for those. Uh, na, nandito na rin si Sir John Brixter. Nalawang John natin. <laughs> okay, which of the following is both endocrine and an exocrine gland? Anin ba dito? Yung endocrine at exocrine na gland natin. Uh, is it A, gastric glands, B, thyroid glands, C, pituitary glands, or D, pancreas? So, both siya na endocrine at exocrine na gland. Okay. So, sige, anong sagot natin dito? <laughs> we have mga silent viewers lang, no? <laughs> Ang palagi ko mo comment dito, si Sir John, si Mom C, Siren, si Sir... John Brexter. Oh, hi, Mom. Catherine or Tala. Oh, hello, Mom. Jenny Kakal. <laughs> so, iba't iba ang ating sagot. So, ano bang answers natin dito? Okay. So, both endocrine and exocrine gland would be the pancreas. Okay. Remember this one, ha? The pancreas. So, palagi tong ulit-ulit lang to sa si pancreas. So, John Ed, uh, ano yung uh, hormone na nini-release ni pancreas? Yeah. Yan yung tanong. Or, ano yung or ang hormone, ano yung uh, organ na nag-release ng insulin? Oh, that's the pancreas. So, reverse lang yung question. So, pancreas, it releases insulin and glucagon. So, ano ba role na itong dalawa na ito? So, insulin is, uh, it lowers the blood no sugar level natin. Diba? Yung mga diabetic na tao, they would inject insulin. Oh, I, uh, hindi ko yung malilimutan because I have an aunt who is diabetic. So, palagi siyang nag inject ng insulin. So, it lowers the blood sugar level natin. For the glucagon, it increases po. No? It, eh, opposite po siya sa insulin. It increases the blood sugar. So, insulin lowers, glucagon um, increases. So, sa pancreas. So, kahit maliit lang yung organ ng pancre na pancreas na yan, but napakalaki ng ng role. So, uh, lahat naman ng organ. Except for those vestigial na organ. Na meron tayong mga vestigial organs. Marami yung vestigial organs. Yung mga hindi na ginagamit and 
um, scientists theorize that eventually mawawala din siya yung appendix natin. No, appendix. Uh, it is a vestigial organ. So, we would survive. <laughs> Kaya nga, oh, binibenta para pang concert ni Taylor Swift. <laughs> or yung kidney, di ba? Dalawa yung kidney natin. Pero kailangan natin yung kidney. Yung vestigial is yung uh, the wisdom tooth. No? Vestigial din siya. Na pwede naman wala yung wisdom tooth. Mga vestigial na organs. Okay, sige. Uh, let's proceed. Uh, 51. Which cause uh, our bones to turn brittle and easily break? Uh, easily break, rather. Brittle and easily break. A. Turning into muscle tissues. B. Increase in flexibility. C. Turbidity decrease. Or D. Removal of collagen. Our bones. Yung mga bones natin. Oh, bakit naging brittle siya? Ano yung cause? Okay. So, your answers. Hi, Ma'am Jessa. <laughs> Bago si Ma'am Jessa. So, your answers. Uh... All, letter D, removal of collagen, which is correct. Very good. No, kaya nga, merong mga, uh, mga, yun, 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 yung mga collagen drink na iniinom. So, it is good for the bones, for the skin. No, So, as you age, your body starts producing less collagen. Kaya, yeah, the skin becomes thinner, drier, less uh, elastic. The loss of collagen leads to wrinkle formation. Oh, kaya, we have to drink <laughs> may mga na, mga collagen rich na mga drink para uh, para sa ating skin no para iwas sa wrinkle pero napakamahal <laughs> yung mga bello na mga collagen drink di ba mga beauty milk ganun may mga collagen so uh, need siya ng ating katawan uh, silent viewers si ma'am Jessa Hello, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much for uh, sticking <laughs> until now. Sige, let's proceed. Oh, we're almost done. Now we have uh, pila na lang ka slides left. So, 52. What is the first element in the periodic table? Oh, bonus question. <laughs> Pero sometimes, oh, malilito pa rin tayo, di ba? Kung ano ba yung, ano ba yung element, unang element sa periodic table? Is it helium? Is it hydrogen? Is it oxygen or carbon? Okay, so the first element would be, of course, hydrogen. No, hydrogen, number one. Atomic number niya is one. By the way, the atomic number is equals to the number of protons. Huh? Number of protons. And in a neutral na, uh, na element, um, number of protons is the same with the number of electrons. So... Num atomic number, for example, uh, calcium is number 20. So, yeah, number 20. So, it means na meron siyang 20, 20 protons. No? 20 protons ang calcium. Uh, for this one, boron. Boron is atomic number niya, number 5. So, it means na meron siyang 5 protons. 5 protons na atomic number. So, hydrogen is the number 1 the element. is the lightest element. Ko siya yung pinakagaan but ang nilalagay natin sa mga balloons is helium. ba Yung helium. Have you tried that? Um, yung gas ng balloon. And then you have like chipmunks na bosses. So, helium yung ginamit natin is because hydrogen is highly reactive and um, it would explode, no? Ma ano siya? Uh, sasabog siya. Sasabog yung hydrogen. Meron nga mga hydrogen bomb. No? Ito rin yung fuel natin sa mga rockets sa, na pupunta sa outer space. No? Hydrogen gas. So that's why helium yung nasa uh, mga balloons natin para lumilipad. Because gaan. Um, ano gaan? <laughs> yeah, hindi heavy yung helium. <laughs> so helium is uh, yung hydrogen. Yan yung, uh, one more thing, yan yung gas na nasa sun natin, yung sa star. No? Hydrogen and helium. Fusion of hydrogen. So, ang nangyayari sa ating star, nangyayari sa ating sun, is fusion of hydrogen. Uh, it becomes helium. Yan yung fuel ng ating sun. So, baka um, malito kayo ha, um, uh, question is, ilan ba yung star natin sa ating solar system? We only have uh, one. One star, which is our sun, no? The sun. So, isa lang yung star natin, ha? Sa solar system. 
So, yung mga stars na nakikita natin, napakalayo niyan. At uh, hindi na yan parte ng ating solar system. We only have one star, yeah? only the sun. So, what is happening in the sun is fusion of hydrogen. No? Uh, it becomes helium. So, the first, and hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. No? Ang, ang hydrogen, the most abundant element, hydrogen. So, lahat ng uh, elements na to is nagaling siya sa hydrogen. So, that's why meron saying na we are made of star stuff. No, tayong lahat, we are made of star stuff. Kasi yung, yung mismong elements na nasa stars is, um, ay mismo element na nasa ating mga katawan here on Earth, no, yung mga sa mga bagay-bagay, galing siya sa same element na nasa stars. No, so, hydrogen, lahat. So, we have 118 Um, as of the moment, known elements. Baka, pero baka may makadiskubre sa inyo dito. <laughs> Ipangalan natin. No, sa, oh, John Brexter. Brexterium. <laughs> na element. Ang pangalan, di ba? Meron dito mga, oh, Ancentadium, Rutherfordium. Yan, mga, ano yan, in honor sa mga nakadiscover sa kanila. No? So, we have 92 natural elements. At yung, the rest is mga synthetic na yan. Ginawa sa laboratory. <laughs> Mildridium, wow. <laughs> Di ba? Ano nga na pakinggan? <laughs> pakinggan. Sige, let's proceed to the next item. Which of the following statements best explains why copper is the metal most widely used in electrical wiring? No, sa mga korente natin, copper yung ginagamit. Though copper is not the best uh, conductor sa electricity, pero yan yung ginagamit natin. Pero bakit kaya? So, we have gold. No, as the best conductor. Silver also. No, mas better yun na conductor kaysa copper. Pero mahal. <laughs> Napakamahal. Uh, some people would still pagani kahit copper, lalo na lalo, kapag gold yung ginagamit natin. But gold is uh, the best no, conductor sa electricity. So why is it na copper yung ginagamit natin? Uh, not letter A. Okay, okay, obviously not letter A. It is not the best. B is it is cheaper than aluminum. C, it is better conductor than aluminum and cheaper than silver. Or D, it has high resistance to electricity. So, bakit kaya copper yung ginagamit natin sa mga electrical wirings? Okay, so that would be letter C. Okay, letter C yan. Better siya kaysa sa aluminum and it is cheaper than, than silver. So, silver is a better conductor than copper pero napakamahal ng silver <laughs> so we have to use copper no copper copper is cheaper and it is better than aluminum okay so that's it kaya copper yung ginagamit natin sa mga electrical wirings sige let's have 54 54 a lot of malnourished children in africa are found to have poor teeth and eyesight so this is believed to be caused by deficiency in what vitamin? So, is it uh, A, vitamin A and D, B, iodine, C, vitamin C, D, iron. So, ano ba yan? Teeth, poor teeth, and eyesight. So, nasagot natin dito. Okay. So, we have letter A. Okay, that is correct. Very good. So, vitamin A is for our eyesight, no? Yan yung uh, dapat makaya tayo ng kalabasa, yung mga carrots, no? Rich in vitamin A for our eyesight. And D, for the bones, for the teeth. Um, nakukuha din natin ang vitamin D sa exposure natin sa sunlight, no? Every morning. Yung uh, early sa morning, kasi harmful na yung um, sun pag late na, no? So, vitamin A for eyesight. D is for the bones, for the Teat. At yung deficiency ng vitamin D, common question is ano yung uh, sakit? So, we call that rickets, no? yung rickets, no? kulang sa vitamin D. Vitamin A is for the eyesight. So, we have iodine. Need din natin yung iodine. No? Kukuha din natin to yung iodine sa mga um, pagkain sa, yung sa dagat. ba diba? Yung mga clams, yung mga, mga may shell, ba diba? So, Then, vitamin C for our immune system. Ang luck, ang question dito, common question sa board exam na ano yung deficiency, ano yung tawag sa sakit pag kulang sa deficiency ng uh, vitamin C. So, we call that scurvy. No? Scurvy, kulang sa uh, vitamin C. Na may deficiency sa vitamin C. And, of course, iron. Need natin to, lalo na pag uh, mga anemic, di ba? May anemia. 
So, that's why um, during my review day, so before anime kasi ako, so that's why I always um, take iron, no, yung ferrous, <laughs> ferrous and, and vitamin B. So, lalo na if you are going to study late at night, so kailangan natin ng iron. So, drink vitamins, iron, and um, vitamin B for the brain. Vitamin B for the brain. Brain complex. Really, um, na-notice ko talaga na um, when I started drinking vitamin B, and they recommend lang din yun ng lecturer na top natural din. So, she recommended the vitamin B, no, yung B complex. And I really noticed na mas na easily na remember ko yung mga binabasa ko when I started um, taking vitamin B. No, vitamin B is for the brain. And iron. Okay, so yeah, let's proceed. Uh, 55, so second to the last question. The first Filipino who was declared a natural scientist who contributed much in discovering local plants that can be used as a medicine is... Uh, sino yung unang Filipino na nislara na natural scientist? No, so, discovering local plants. Is it Dr. Pacifico Marcos, B. Dr. Henry Mosley, C. Dr. Elisio Quintanar, or letter D. Dr. Alfredo Santos? No, ito yung mga trivial na mga questions. Like, if hindi mo talaga alam yung sagot, you really have to guess na lang, no? You would resort to guessing if you really don't know. So, lucky for me, okay, uh, there were questions also in Gen Ed na I... Talaga, I don't know, so I I guess na lang the answer and uh, right, part na talaga rin, part na rin yung luck. Okay, right after I searched the correct answer and oh my, my God's grace, tama naman yung guess ko. So, talagang uh, it's luck also. And if you're familiar with these names, if meron ka lang, uh, if kilala mo na tong ibang tao na to at alam mo ano yung contribution niya, then you would be able to eliminate, no? maka-eliminate ka na. So, magiging higher yung chances ng uh, pagkuha mo ng correct answer. So, that's why it's better if you would read a lot. Just read a lot. You don't have to be a, a nerd <laughs> or hindi mo kailangan talaga magbasa ng magbasa ng intensive. Kahit everyday lang. Like, uh, mga ilang minutos lang or just try to learn. Make it a habit na you have to learn uh, make it a goal nga meron dapat meron kang matutunan every day kahit isang concept lang sa prof ed or kahit mga ilang facts lang sa gen ed you know so every day no so ma remember lang talaga ng ating brain if we're going to read a lot like yung kanina the nerve cell no the longest cell in our body sa major ship namin my first uh, that was not my first choice but um in my mind i feel like i've read a question before na uh, yan yung sagot. Parang nabasa ko siya dati talaga. So, parang nag-debate ako sa utak ko. But then, uh, I choose the nerve cell. Kasi, pakiramdam ko, nabasa ko siya somewhere. So, ganyan. Uh, if you're going to read a lot, so parang ma-remember mo rin talaga yun. No? Ma- ma-familiar. O, kumbaga. <laughs> Ay, pagdating sa boarding cell, familiar na lang yun. Uh, pero, ito, it's better, it's good na naka-familiar ka sa ibang concept, sa ibang... Um, mga questions na uh, like this one. So, if meron kang kilalang tao dito, so, may maka-eliminate ka na, ba? So, maging higher yung uh, probability na makukuha mo yung correct na answer. So, for this one, if you really don't know, so, <laughs> we would guess na lang. So, doc, this is uh, Dr. Alfredo Santos. No? So, a national scientist. Si Dr. Alfredo. Okay? So, the first Filipino who was declared a natural uh scientist. So, according to Mama Sayurin, you know, instinct na lang talaga. <laughs> and prayer. Okay, last, last question. Uh, 56. A cold-blooded animal is one that okay, A, lacks red corpuscles, B, lacks white corpuscles, C, has a variable body temperature, or D, has a fixed body temperature. So, tayo, mga humans, ano tayo? Uh, warm-blooded tayo, no? Mga um, human beings. So, uh, ang ating temperature ay sa human. Diba? Warm. Uh, same lang yung temperature natin. For the cold-blooded, that would be sa cold-blooded, cold-blooded. 
di ba, human beings, normal body temperature is uh, 37 no, degrees Celsius. Uh, 36 to 37, ganyan. But, so it's fixed already sa, sa warm-blooded. So, ang cold-blooded is variable ang kanyang body temperature. Kasi nakadepende siya sa kanyang environment. <laughs> Kung ano yung nasa environment, yun yung uh, magiging temperature niya. So, yun yung mga cold-blooded animals. Tayo, yung warm-blooded, kahit ilagay pa tayo dun sa, uh, ano, sa North Pole, <laughs> or yung mga tao, di ba, mga tao sa North Pole, if uh, hindi sila nilalagnat, uh, still, uh, nagiging um, normal pa rin yung body temperature nila, no? Na bilang pa rin sa range ng normal body temperature. Kasi fixed na yung temperature natin sa ating katawan. So, for cold-blooded, variable, yung, oh, it varies, no? Yung temperature nila, depende sa kanilang surroundings o like mga mga toads no yung mga frogs kung ano yung temperature ng surroundings nila so yan din yung magiging temperature so for warm blooded for animals like us no yung mga birds mga warm blooded sila tigers monkeys the cows no the dog okay <laughs> bakit ABCD <laughs> sagot ni Ma'am Mildred <laughs> <laughs> ni lahat na sige okay so i'll leave this to you this is the last slide uh i've uh sinulat ko to sa aking notebook this is considered as my power notebook um lahat <laughs> ng mga sinulat ko dito like sagol sagol <laughs> mix na siya so this one uh, the content of your character is your choice day by day what you choose what you think and what you do is who you become. So, may sulat-sulat talaga ako dito. Future top nature. So, kiniklaim ko na talaga. The Lord cannot give what you're praying for if you're not preparing for it. So, hindi naman pwede na. Palagi ka lang mapapray. Lord, sana pumasa ako. Pero, pero hindi ka nag-study. So, nakaswerte. <laughs> Sino ka sinuswerte? <laughs> Dapat, we have to make an effort. Sad, no? So, we have to make sacrifices. Diba? Uh, lalo na pag... Uh, malapit na yung board exam. So, later na yung gala-gala. Later na yung baby time. Uh, si Sir John kanina. Oh, good for Sir John kasi wala siyang ka-baby time. <laughs> so, oh, nakafocus na talaga to si Sir John. <laughs> diba? So, we have to make sacrifices. Yung mga gusto natin gawin. Uh, sige lang. After board exam, you can gawin mo lahat ng gusto mong gawin. Uh, parang, uh, seven, again, 70 days na lang. Huh? Two months and uh, nine days <laughs> no, para for board exam. So, ilang araw na lang. So, we can still make it. So, we have to prepare. So, we have to be holistically prepared. Again, yung katawan natin, we have to prepare as well. Hindi yung po yung uh, mental lang. Dapat emotionally prepared din tayo, physically prepared. So, mga importante din yung mga affirmations. No? So, we have to manifest that already. Uh, claim it already. Okay? Then again, hindi pwedeng puro manifestation lang, ha? Dapat, um, we have to work hard, sad. <laughs> so, again, this is the last, I guess. This is the last, yeah, this is the last slide. So, uh, Ma'am Jan, hi, Ma'am. <laughs> Mami ko wrong answers. <laughs> Top notcher, yay! Sobrang galing. It's so amazing. And thank you, thank you so much, Mom, for helping. Yeah, thank you also, Mom Jen, for giving me an opportunity you know, for this platform. Yay! Okay, so. so anyway, thank you so much, Mom, because your voice. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.